Good evening and welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting of May 29, 2024. Time is 6.01 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in a specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Blake Gilmore, and provide their name and address for the record. All right, so call the meeting to order. Um, we have an uh, opportunity for two-minute public comments. Uh, anyone in attendance? Welcome. Come, come out up to the mic and identify yourself and speak away. Hi, I'm uh, Marie Thomas, North Main Street. Um, I have a couple of questions, and I know that you can't discuss stuff that's not on the agenda, but I wanted to bring something up that maybe could be on a future agenda. Wonderful. My, my first question is whether or not you've got plans to put parking lines uh, out behind between the church and the 1888 building, because it seems like it's a really nice big parking lot that is going to be underutilized because there are no lines. And I think that for safety's sake and everything, you could get a lot more cars in there if you had lines. So that's one comment. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is, I had talked to Trevor the other day. Um, <clears throat> I understand that we have a building at the um, transfer station that can be used for a, um, a give or take, uh, you know, recycling thing. And uh, I've been trying to find out if anybody's made plans with it, and apparently there's not. Mm -hmm. So before, mm -hmm. uh, so maybe, I don't know if you want to put that on a future agenda or not, but I had a couple of questions, and I did. Briefly talk to Veronique up in um, Conway because they have one, and that's managed by volunteers. They're an ad hoc committee, and they have to sign liability waivers um, to be part of that. So my question is: Is would that be the same thing here? Are we sure that nobody else is trying to organize some kind of swap program there or whatever? Because I'd be happy to try to help organize something, although I don't want to be in charge of it forever. But I, I certainly. Um, help to get it organized and get it going, come up with some guidelines. And I just would like to get some guidelines from you all about what you would expect of whether it be an ad hoc committee or if it have to be an official committee. Um, I'm just concerned about the liability thing. So either if people had to do, you know, so can you follow what I'm, I'm saying there? I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. So I don't know if you just need to discuss that, put it on an agenda, a future agenda, or if you, somebody could just send me a note. Yeah, probably need to do a little research on the latter question. Okay. Um, so. But I think that we should I take advantage of it since we've got the building. And I think there's a fair number of people in town. I find the older I get, the more passionate I get about recycling and reuse things. I mean, I'm always digging returnables out of the recycling bin, even though I'm not supposed to, and donate them to the library. Uh, and I even pulled a, a peanut butter jar out and washed it and that kind of stuff. So, so I came from a community that had that swap shop, and they actually shut it down. And the reason for it was people were putting a lot of stuff in there that didn't need to go in there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you would, I, I would suggest, yes, a committee that would regulate what's going in there and what's being used so that you don't end up with an overcrowded, because I would go to the dump in that, particular town and there'd be stuff all around the building and yeah, the whole I, bit. I so I mean you'd have to set it up so that yeah. it was contained. Well I came from a town where we had one and it was a fantastic, absolute fantastic resource but it was managed by the staff at the drop off, the transfer station mm -hmm. and they just got tired of doing it Right. and um, they just didn't want to do it anymore. So I w what I would do is I suggest having um, uh, a call to action see how many people would be interested. Maybe it would only be open for two days a month or something mm -hmm. like that, but however many people would staff it. But we'd also have to come up with a set of guidelines as to what could be dropped off. Yeah. Um, and um, Conway has uh, a set, a, a very simple set, like don't drop anything off unless it was something that you would pick up, you know, something that could be used and stuff. But it has to be managed. It can't be left 
unattended. So it would have to there have to be enough people who'd want to spend an hour or two a month mm -hmm. um, to to help manage it. And so that's kind of that's I, kind of why where we're why we're where we are right now is that like we got the building, yeah. we don't have time for our staff to do it, right. but we do think. You know, call to action if we can get some people together, do an ad hoc committee, and you know, and then, like you said, write some rules and stuff. I w I'm definitely in favor of it because we need to do something instead of just wasting so much. Okay, so, so if I wanted to, I could arrange with Chris or, or somebody to get a meeting yeah. room here um, and, and just well, put out a call. And we're first gonna, we'll probably have to get it on agenda. Okay. Yeah, we. Yeah, we'll talk offline then. Yeah. But thanks for the. You know, basically, okay. your two Appreciate minutes that. is <laughs> okay. gone to five. Well, just, yep. Where Thank I you. am, you know where to find me. Yep. And Appreciate I'd it. like to, I, you know, I'd like to get something going. Thanks, yep. Marie. Um, Thank and you. Really uh, then it. the third thing, remember that we're bearing the time capsule. I don't yes. know if that's what Rocky's here or not. <laughs> Didn't you get it no. We're bearing the time capsule on, on June 8th. Yes. Please attend, everybody. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Marie. Thank you so much. Anyone else have a public comment? Chris Harris. Chris Harris. It's, it's just uh, it's just um, add to what Marie just said. It's on Saturday, June eighth, starting at eleven thirty sharp, bearing the time capsule, and there'll be a twelve noon luncheon in uh, the town hall afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, any other comment? Okay. Um, now we'll uh, move on, but I don't know if. Um, Christopher is here. Christopher, are you ready to ready to make your presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Just a few quick things for the board. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, yep, so uh, number one, you should have a couple of contracts uh, in front of you. Uh, one is for Davenport Trucking. That is for the North Main Sidewalk Project. We talked about last time. Yep. Um, so for Cog, uh, pulled together the contract documents and they've been signed by Davenport so we just uh, I believe Casey remind me what our motion here is are we looking for uh, Tim's authorization to sign or the board or so yep. the first one I actually had was the Taylor Davis one but Davenport oh, okay. we going to um, I wrote the motion up it was the motion was to approve the sidewalk improvements contract with Davenport and authorize the chair to sign so do you want to make a motion and then we'll sure. go on to the next thing? Trevor? Yep. Um, I'll do each one. So we'll do the sidewalk first here. So I move the, to approve Deerfield North Main Street Sidewalk Improvements contract as presented with Clayton Davenport Trucking, Inc. and authorize the chair to sign. To the second. I will second it. Second. <laughs> All right. It's I been moved. You, in. When you said second, I thought no. you did. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I was offering the opportunity. Uh, right. is, so is there uh, any further discussion? We did discuss this at last meeting, and yep. it's been in the works for several years, and thankfully we're getting to it now. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so if there's no other discussion, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. <laughs> Great. I'll also make a motion to approve the South Deerfield excuse me, the Deerfield Shared Streets and Spaces North Main Street Pedestrian Improvements Contract with Taylor Davis Landscape <laughs> Landscape and Construction as presented and authorize the chair to sign. I second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. All right. Thank you. All right, back to you, Christopher. Okay, and then real quick, uh, the last item on there, uh, you should have in your packets a proposal from Ty and Bond. Um, this is for the Elm Street Complete Streets work we've been talking about. Uh, that contract or the, the proposal you should have is for $27,500. Uh, that would cover survey work of Elm Street between Railroad and Main, and also conceptual design uh, for Complete Streets treatment. So, you know, widening of the sidewalks, uh, potentially a tree belt. Um, Etc. Um, so that um, you know that contract would hopefully, if we you know if we move forward, then uh, they would start work this summer. Um, we would use some of that work to go to local businesses and kind of present some of those ideas and just remind them 
you know, this is something that the town has been talking about for years. It is in our complete streets plan, um, but we just want to make sure we're re-engaging at this point since it has been a little while since mm -hmm. any of those things were discussed uh, with business owners. So that's um, that's a proposal from Pine Bond. Um, I would just mention real quick that you know one item that they're looking to knock out pretty much immediately is a very high level conceptual design for the the sidewalks because we're going to be uh, hopefully applying for an ADA municipal improvement grant uh, in June and that would fund you know potentially up to two hundred thousand dollars worth of that sidewalk work. Uh, fortunately, Elm Street is in our ADA transition plan, so they know we've been planning to you know, smooth out the sidewalks and make it ADA accessible, so it's eligible for that kind of funding. I know that we, um, we do have money set aside for um, complete streets. When, when we funded the common four or five years ago, um, I think we had an error. That I didn't understand the common was owned by the state, a lot of the roads around it, so we couldn't use that money at that point. So I know that, I believe there's 40,000 sitting yeah, in the account for that. I wanted Christopher to talk about the funding source for this oh, great. study. So explain that the money is already there, we've had it for a while. Yeah, I, precisely. As, like what Trevor was saying, we have a $40,000 appropriation for complete streets for just this type of work. Um, so we can use that, and then of course, additionally, there's, uh, you know, given how low the sidewalk uh, bids came in, you know, there's additional funding there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this would get basically the, you know, the idea here is this 27,000 would get us the survey work, conceptual design, and then Ty and Bond would take that and roll it into uh, preliminary design for an application to complete streets construction funding. So. Yep. Basically, that work would take them through September. They would apply October 1st for the, the funding. And then, fingers crossed, you know, we get an award in the winter and they're able to complete their design work and go out to bid for construction in the summer. And can you talk about, like, what our eligibility for complete streets is in terms of numbers? Is it up to 500,000 or, or do you know? Yeah, at this point, it, it is up to 500,000. Um, so, yeah. I believe a community can use, I believe you have a $500,000 allotment for a four year period. Um, so we could, we could blow through the whole 500,000, you know, one project, or you can kind of space it out um, across multiple projects in multiple years. So if we were able to get ADA money at the top end of the 200,000 level and we only needed another 250,000 to do the Elm Street sidewalks, we would be able to bank 250,000 towards some future project in a four year period. Is, is that what you're saying, basically? Potentially, yes. We don't have good cost estimates for Elm Street at this point. Obviously, it hasn't even gotten to conceptual design, but that is you know, a possibility. Yeah, that was a hypothetical. I was just trying to you know, explain to people that you know, depending on how we manage this, you know, we could do other work if we do it in a cost effective way. So, um, what, are the, what do you guys think about this idea? I think we should move forward. We've been wanting to do these sidewalks and improve Elm Street for a long time. And until we have a plan and a budget, and, and we've got grant opportunities coming up, uh, I think it makes sense to use the money we've had sitting for four or five years ready to roll out for this specific item. Let's do it. What do you think, Blake? You know that? Okay. Um, anybody want to make a motion? I'll make There's a, mo a notice to award motion. On this here? Oh, great. You are so prepared. That's great. Um, so uh, let's see. So um, I'll move to award the Complete Streets uh, Complete Streets Tier 3 service, Services Project, Elm Street Survey, and Conceptual Plans to Tie and Bond, as presented. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. And then Tim uh, LGI. That was the notice uh, of a of award, and yeah. then the um, this is the contract approval. So a move to approve the complete streets tier three service project, Elm Street survey and conceptual designs pending contract finalization with council, and authorize the chair to sign at his convenience. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Wonderful. Great work. Thank you. Thank Everybody, you. Everybody, Christopher, appreciate that. Anything else, Chris? 
No, that's it for me. Any questions from the board? No. Thanks for the work on this. I know it's been COVID came in and a lot of things got pushed to pushed to the side. And um, so appreciate you getting back on board with it. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Um, any uh, select board reports and announcements? Well, um, I will make one. I, I, this will maybe with Kevin here. We've been. You may be aware that uh, the dry dry bridge has been closed because of the structural defects. Uh, this happened this afternoon. Casey, if you can speak to that a little, you know, more informed than I am, but. Not as, not as much as I would like. The emergency management director, uh, Chief Pachurik, has been communicating directly with MassDOT on this. We did receive an email from Matt Minahan down at District 2 informing us that after some work they did this morning um, or this afternoon that they're temporarily closing it. Hold on. Yeah. Um, Do you want me to read the email? The, they identified it issues with the superstructure that require immediate attention. So they're going to be meeting and we'll get more information, but I wanted to make sure the board was aware of this. So I printed the email out um, for you. So the bridge location is North Main Street over the railroad. Um, the detour, there will be a detour for this. So it's going to be US 5 to Hillside Road to North Hillside Road back down to North Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, and they're actually working on closure and detour signage now. I expect that will probably be finalized tomorrow, if not okay. later today. Yep. And I, I think the intention is to, once they get the, um, the language written, that we'll be further annou announcing this through our uh, public service uh, yep. announcement system so everybody's made aware because um, when I came uh, I didn't notice any signage at, at this point so I just came down past Cumbies because I had the benefit of hearing from Casey so yep. all yeah, right. John had sent us an email earlier today do we know, I know that this bridge was on the, the list for DOT is it for complete replacement so I, or um, is it just they're going to redo it. Well, I can give a little background. So uh, back before all of our times, um, this bridge was approved and ready and at 90% design. Um, MassDOT was going to do it. They had done, I think, most of the takings. They were all ready to go. Uh, the select board in Deerfield pulled out of the project. This was back in the early 90s, late 80s sometime. Um, and that, that upset Mass DOT quite a bit, so uh, we've been promising plates of cookies ever since I've been on the board that we really um, would love to get this back on the schedule, and I think they have been kind of working their way to get it back on the list. At several meetings several years ago, we had been talking about trying to get this back moving again, and, um, and they're aware of it. Every time we meet with DOT, we bring it up again that it's an, an issue for us, and I think this hopefully this will you move the move the process along a little bit more. Maybe it'll, they'll find a quick fix for you know a little bit. It, it's going to be inconvenient. Uh, I know that we've been slowing down traffic, trying to not get trucks over it, um, trying to make it last as long as we can, even for you know just like cars. But it's gone past that. So um, we've been asking as a board every meeting, and, and I think they're acknowledging that, and hopefully this will move that along. But yeah, what we would uh, with this design. Uh, Things have changed, regulations have changed, the, the takings would have to be larger because I think they need sidewalks either on one or both sides, but it was so that it would be a wider taking at this point. A whole new design needs to be done, so um, hopefully we can get on the list. You know, they've been great about um, Stillwater Bridge, so hopefully, hopefully they'll be good about this one too and help us out. Casey, you said they're going to have a meeting tomorrow. I think they're going to have a meeting. I think that's what John said, but I can let you know once I have more information. Okay. Yep. Uh, I don't. I believe Valerie is here if you want any Board of yeah. Health updates too. To yeah, from Valerie. Um, yeah, that was the main announcement I had. So Valerie, are you ready to help us out here? Let me see. Sure, go ahead. If you have questions, I sent you some information um, by email for your packets and I also um, had Pat print out the affidavit for 9197 Stillwater Road, and that project is moving ahead. 
Okay. So can you just, um, because people in the crowd probably don't know what you're talking about, can you just give a little background on this property? It's the Romanowski property. Right, there's actually two houses there, two, two different properties. Um, the property has been derelict um, in violation of code um, for a number of years, I think like 30 years. So uh, Mr. Romanowski had passed away. So I had approached the Attorney General's office to put this property in receivership, which is the route that we're going. So what happens then is, as you see, I wrote up the affidavit. That's going to be presented to the court. The court will appoint a receiver, somebody to uh, correct the code violations. And once those are done, then the property will go to auction with the minimum price as what the receiver has into it for his time and materials. And then at that point, it'll be, it'll be auctioned to anybody who wants to buy it. Okay. Is there anything else that uh, we need to talk about? Um, we don't know the uh, With that property, I, I, um, I think pretty much we're all set. Um, as the property, as we go to court, I'll, I'll inform the board when that happens. Okay. Anything else, Valerie? It, it, yeah, it has been a long time coming. Yes. Yep. Other, and, and you've been, uh, welcome back, by the way. I hope you had a good, good time away. And um, I know Thank that you. you've, been, you've been busy doing um, food truck inspections and other, other, other inspections around town. We got your message on that, so thank you for that. Okay. Got nothing else? All right. Mosquitoes um, are out with all the rain, so. Great. Please uh, protect yourself, especially at dawn and dusk, and, um, and ticks are still miserable. Parmethrin. So, Taking up Carolyn's. Yeah, there you go. Um, all right, thanks, Valerie. Uh, is there anything, anything else we need Valerie for? Nope. Um, I don't think so. I, I think that that's pretty much it. You have my report for the things yep. that have been done in May. Yep. Um, and, and and granted, I, I only was here for May 16th through the present because I was on vacation. But yep. It's, it, it, it's two and a half weeks worth of time um, that you're looking at. So it, yeah. it's been pretty busy. It's been picking up. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Have a great night. Thanks, Thanks. Alex. You too. All right. So we have a couple of minutes yep. that we can look at. So. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, select board minutes from April 29th, 2024 as presented. And I'll second that. Um, any discussion? Nope. All right. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Tim, Tim Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Great. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for um, May 13th, 2024, as presented. And I'll second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And that was, that was Blake's full, first full yes. official meeting. So. Yep. Hopefully we can keep pace with these minutes and keep them current. Yeah. Because um, I know that's a challenge. It is a challenge, yep. Yeah. All right. Um, discussion items. Um, Mr. Scarborough. Well, come on up. Come on up, Kevin. <laughs> the price is right. How are you? Well, good. You? Good to see you. Good to see. Um, so, <clears throat> you had a chance to work on this, I think, with Casey and personnel on the public works. Oh, uh, uh, which part of the, the superintendent job description? So the first item is the oh, superintendent's I, job description. I don't know. What, I don't see yours. So I'm kind of in the yep. dark. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got a spare one here, I think, but. Um, yeah, do I have two in my packet. Is you that, do. Is that correct? One of okay. them is the 20th. Chris Nolan had the 20th. Um, he didn't realize that the on the 22nd, gotcha. personnel board approved a 21 from the 22nd. And okay. what they approved was something that included some minor changes Kevin and I had discussed before the personnel board meeting. Um, and really that related to qualifications and... Um, 
some of rearranging some wording from one section to another. Um, I think one of the things that I explained to personnel board was we have a small crew, and we've talked about this before. We have a small crew, so we really have a working superintendent. So in terms of special requirements or qualifications, um, in the past we've always had a hoister's license as well as a CDL license, commercial driver's license. Mm -hmm. And so after some conversation, and I really took all the information that you guys reviewed on the 13th, I sent that to the personnel board, but Kevin and I sat down and really took elements of some of those job descriptions and, and compared them with the elements of the old job description we had in the new format. Mm -hmm. and made some adjustments to essential functions and to things like adding occupational risk because we hadn't included that in the past. So some of this came from information we received in the class comp study, but also really looking at other job descriptions and being mindful of the fact that we're sort of in between in terms of size. We're a small town. We operate essentially like a public works department, although we're not formally organized that way. And we have a working superintendent. So what else would you like to add, Kevin? Those are some of the elements I had, had sort of discussed with you, but also taken to personnel. Right. Uh, basically, I, I, like I said, uh, Casey and I went through it. We reviewed it. There are some changes that were made. Uh, nothing that was really major. Um, it's as far as the working part of it, uh, it's going to be depends on what the board wants from the department. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations? Which really is what you need to start with. Right. What are you expecting out of the department? And then um, that will dictate what you're going to need for personnel. Miracles? So, we, yeah. can we, can we so if you're miracles? asking for X and it takes Y employees and we only have A, right. then either you adjust your expectations. Adjust your personnel or adjust expectations. you make it perfectly clear that we can't do this anymore. Right. So I know I noticed cemeteries was like one one word up in the top and not and that's in your work is a lot more than one word in the top paragraph and I didn't know if that should be under essential functions or not um, or should we look to maybe actually you know, move that you know, outside I, that as soon as you said that I was like oh. yeah yeah because I just been living that again this past <laughs> week um, yeah there's there's a lot to you know it's not just a layout it's trying to figure out where people are right um, if people still exist um you know how old are, are, are well. the lots because our bylaws basically say after 50 years they get turned back over to the town yeah um i've got some areas i'm looking in there that we've got vast area of open space but my question is is were they buried at one point in time when right. they couldn't afford headstones? Yeah. So now, yeah. what do you do? How do you go about it? So realistically, and yeah. in, 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 I may be kind of going off a little bit. No, I'm sorry, it's fine. But it's fine. If you really want to to know what you have, it's going to be an expense ahead of time. But if you do the ground penetration, you know exactly mm -hmm. what you got. Right. And then you can line everything out because yeah. you've seen how I know. the layout of of how we do cemetery plots it's is insane. Got to get digital. You know, it's it's not by line or mm -hmm. column it's whenever you buy it so right. number one buys over here number two buys over here number three buys there number five buys there yeah and they buy three the it's it's a nightmare to try and track it um, is nothing's in line realistically uh i wish i would have lived long enough to be able to try and make this because this was one of my things i really wanted to try and get done is to actually line these places up and and get it done the only place you can really do that now is the extra space that you have up at um the one off of Upper Road. You have the opportunity there because it's all blank. It's a blank slate. You can do a layout there. Now it's it's almost impossible because of the staggering. Right. Um, but to kind of go back to what you're saying, yes, there there is a ton of stuff that goes along with the cemetery. It's just not just um, looking at you know making sure that the grounds are kept properly. Right. In the you know the 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 meat and bones of it is is going in, looking where the people are, um, try and find them. The recording of such with with the clerk's office, mm -hmm. um, and then when there's burials, you got to deal with, um, you know, it's it's convenient for this position when it's being done through a funeral home, right? Um, it's just about everything's done. But when it's the people want to do their own burial, you know, without, or excuse me, without, um, you know, they're still required to have us dig the hole and and fill the hole, no matter how they do it. 
but the logistics behind it turns into tenfold. Mm. Um, so yeah, you're right. <clears throat> There's a lot there. Is it something that should be separated out into a separate position, or is it just going to have to stay? Well, once again, it depends on what you're looking for. Because to be honest with you, I mean, you know, when, when, when I raise my hand every year for the past 13 years or 12, 10 years, um, it's not just one thing. No. There's like 14 things, I'm, you know, yeah. uh, I'm, I am the surveyor of lumber and timber. Yes. I am the moth inspector. Right. I am the crypt keeper. I am um, the assistant uh, emergency management director. Yeah. I am, uh, literally, it's two pages worth of this is I what know. you are. Put your hand up. Right. right. And we um, can't capture all of that in essential functions. It's no, just I get not that. possible. But yeah. Something that. to kind of go along with that, reevaluate that part of it. Because, I mean, right. realistically, the moth inspector... Yeah. That was from the 70s because of gypsy moths. Right. You know, Is that needed it, at the moment? It, do we really need that anymore? Right. You know, um, should the surveyor of land and, and timber fall underneath the... Um, tree warden? Tree warden. Right. Probably. So. You know, yeah. Keeper of the forest, because I'm a keeper of the town forest also. Right. I only know where two of them are. I suppose we got three. <laughs> Seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know we had any. Yeah, no, yeah. we got some up on Pine Nook and we got some up off of... Um, Hawks, but yeah, yeah, it's anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, so okay. To kind of go along with what you're saying, yeah, there are probably some parts that probably should be looked at to see whether the the swearing in part mm -hmm. should be probably easily either eliminated and or handed off to, to mm -hmm. appropriate personnel. Right. Um, assistant position right now, the way it stands, even working in in the assistant pretty much deals with the day to day. Operations, which is pretty much a handful, all that, right. all by himself. Right. Mind trying to take on the, the administrative end of it at the right. same time. Right. Um, could they go ahead and pick up that part of it? Yeah, they probably could because Mike did it before mm -hmm. uh, as the assistant. Um, uh, it's not super often per se, mm -hmm. but it comes in waves. You know, right. Like all of a sudden, it, uh, four right. in the past week. Right. You know, and I haven't had anything for probably a month. Or right. More. But it can consume you all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, it does, and it comes. In, and then, unfortunately, when you're doing that, you know, you got to. There's no. Hey, can I call you back next week? This is. Yeah, they need. You know, they're, you're, they're you're trying to, especially you know, if, depending on what the denomination of the person is, you know, because if you're looking at somebody's Muslim or something, you're talking like a short. Yes. Short no, they don't have much time. Of yeah. Being able to try and get somebody married, mm -hmm. right? You know, within their. Yeah. Criteria for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. for sure. So yeah, there's there's a lot to it that goes along with it. Um, okay. All right. I just wanted to kind of <laughs> chat about that because I, I know it's a it's complex, large part of the job, and right. like you said, it's spotty. But when it happens, it's super important. And I do feel like, I mean, it may be a point where we want to take some funding and get some help to ground penetration layout. It's something that maybe the staff would, our town would work with a, a surveyor to kind of you know try to get this all digital and figure this out. I mean, there must be companies that do this. Um, oh, yeah. To help to help towns do that and get it all squared the, away. And what you, we have for maps, I was able to digitize as much as possible. There was one map when I brought it to Staples. They looked at me like we're not even touching it. We're not even touching this thing. Yeah, take take it away. Yeah, um, I said blueprint one. Yep, I remember. The, I think it's somewhere around the twenties. Twenties. Yeah. Yep. I remember so, that when they actually had blueprint. Yeah, <laughs> and that's actually it's still a live document. Yep. We still utilize it. Yes. Yes. So. And it's. It, it can get frayed on the edges. Yeah. yeah so it's okay. 100 105 years old. Yeah. 104 years old. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Well, well um, so you want to talk about? we need to basically read and approve this. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think you brought up some, so Trevor and Kevin sort of in that exchange brought up some good points. Are there other elements that we need to consider? Should we make a mention of cemeteries? Um, and we do say, you know, other duties as assigned, but we mm -hmm. don't mention other types of appointments. Um, and Maybe we should it's have sort a of been a catch-all because of been. how the position oh, and some of this. these responsibilities have happened. Right. But <laughs> functionally, if we were to add some information about cemetery functions, mm -hmm. we could add an element of a central function to that. It doesn't have to be a long one. Right. But, but we could add a sentence about that. I think so. And then maybe an appointment section that just kind of lists. I think we could add that in essential functions. Could be expected to perform duties related to. 
appointments. Or, uh, or and get the list of his appointments. Yeah, then, I haven't looked at that and list then we in probably four years. Before it gets in here, like you said, maybe the moth thing goes mm -hmm. away for a little bit right. you know, until we have another outbreak or something like that. We can always appoint somebody at that point, but right. clean up some of that appointment because I know it's there is a lot. And, and maybe move some stuff to the tree warden or I stuff. think what we could consider, in fact, for the tree warden is you could consider developing a formal job description for it. Right. Um, because the, the assignment is given to a member of staff, but the responsibilities are usually encompassed in a job description. Right. Um, and so that's actually part of how the position evolved. So mm -hmm. maybe we think about developing that job description. Yep. It doesn't have to happen right away, right. but functionally you need a better idea of what you can expect, like he said, what you can expect the position to perform right. in if terms you're of functions. For this thing, you need to kind of give them the heads And you don't up. have don't to approve this today. You yeah. don't. Okay, so an I'm, elected official. I've got a question on this thing. Mm, yep. Tree yes, warden. You're the tree warden? Um, no. no, technically no. It's Jason Miller. Okay, um, but it's, it's a member of your staff. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. So um, there, there is a job description that goes along with it right. because that was a requirement when it's part of the union negotiations mm -hmm. is the tree warden was underneath me. I appoint, or excuse me, the position appoints within. Right. It doesn't have to be within. It was very specific in the union stating that it did not have to be an employee. Right. I can pick anybody in town and make them the tree warden. Mm -hmm. Well, my question is, is that the tree warden back when we were younger right. was not a member of the highway department? No. no. So Correct. This Correct. is something that was added. In Correct. some of these other job descriptions, it's the same thing. They were added to your description Correct. because we lost people to do yeah. it. What's yeah. that? 2012 is when, when we picked up that job okay. description. Yep. Yep. And it I'm, was I'm just wondering if there's right. other Different jobs things. that you're doing that were handled by other... Yes. I think that's a good, a good point to bring up because I think <clears throat> that is how it happened. I it remember is. hearing conversations like that. Now, I don't know, but I know that the tree warden got something like 150 bucks a year yeah. when he was yeah. doing that job. When it, right. Yes. So back at back that point. Day. So I mean to have somebody maybe retired from the that could that has the that knowledge has an in the in background. It. Yeah. I mean it, I, I think agree. that that would help to work that and just make sure that they did fall underneath the um, special the highway employee. superintendent. Yeah, and then special But they employee. Would, again it wasn't that he was the one, or his people were the ones that had right. to actually go out and do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So maybe a little bit more thought into kind of like all those things, all those hats that got dumped on you over the years because they just said, "Kevin will do this." Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, well, yeah. Casey took half of one. I know. She she took over the ADA ADA coordinator. coordinator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still made me consistent. But. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah. it is, it's where everything consolidates as, you know. I like think it would be good to actually call out all the things so that we can say, does this make sense for the DPW chief to be doing this? Mm -hmm. Cemeteries, cemetery fees, you know, how, yeah. how much is a plot supposed to cost? Right. All of these things, you know, what do they have really to do with, mm -hmm. you know, maintaining the roads and the sidewalks and, uh, you know, yeah. all the other things that DPW we expect them to do. So, um, but it's, we're making progress on the description, so that's yeah, good. Yeah, for sure. Right. You know, and, and realistically, to be honest with you, you know, when, when it comes to this position, this is that I know you can't have a living document because when you hire somebody, here's your job description, mm -hmm. that is what it is. But unfortunately, this position has evolved so much from the half days mm -hmm. to today. We for are sure. super light years difference. And, and it's not because of anything different in, in, in how things were handled, but technology has gone so much farther. I mean, Absolutely. when I first came, our, our computer, when we finally got one, was in the other room and you had to use an ice scraper. Literally, no, no lie, because there was no heat in that <laughs> part of the building. You had to use the ice scraper on the screen before you could use it. Yeah. And then half the time it wouldn't work because it was cold. Right. Right. So, yeah. night and day. You know, I mean, and, and now where we're at now, you know, we've got the computers, we've got this, we've got that. You know, it, it's, it's, a completely whole different, different world, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but expectations are different now too. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, right. which you know, I hate to keep going yep. back to. You really need to figure out what your expectations are going to be out of the department. That's and that in right. turn will will point you in a direction. That's so sort the of divisions, brings, but also the position, right? Because they're they're because they connected but hand. different, and they 
they do, there's a lot more emphasis on administration than there used to be, like right. you just said. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you know. Well, one of the things that I think we need to do is take the opportunity with your, your retirement to figure out what our expectations are, because I do agree with that's a huge problem. You know, if, if you're able to do X, Y, and Z, but everybody else expects you to do B, C, and J right. as well, right. um, then you're never going to be treated fairly. So right. um, one thing that we've been sort of, we haven't talked about in an official meeting, but um, possibly getting someone who has um, an outside perspective come in and, and look at the department. Um, one person who's been suggested, his name is Chris Bouchard. He has a long history of this DPW work and um, he's expressed, expressed a willingness to help us on some level. I'm trying, was trying to work with Chief Machork to, to arrange a meeting where we could talk about how that might take place. Sure. Uh, I think he works for Mass Dot now. Yep, he so. does. He is he is now the Mass Dot Chapter 90 um, person for District Two. Mm -hmm. And in the past year that he has been there, he has brought that district literally light years ahead. I mean, before the only time where we would get an email is if there was a problem. We are continually getting emails from Chris. Hey, these are up and coming grants. This is up and coming this. Hey, this is how we're putting together our, our reporting. We want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So I put this spreadsheet together for you. Um, that's, a, that's fantastic. Chris, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I bow to Chris. Mm. I really do. Mm. Um, he is super smart. Um, I've seen what he's done already at the two different towns where he's brought them, where they had issues. Okay. And he, and he's, they, Squared them away, mm -hmm. um, which is basically what he's brought in to do. Um, yeah. And he did a phenomenal mm -hmm. job. He did. Yeah. Uh, Chris's, I, I wish I had half of Chris's knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think I do okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? It's good. So, yeah, Chris is, he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, so we have to, you know, explore whether. Yeah, Mass, explore for the town. Yeah, explore whether MassDOT will allow, what, what MassDOT will allow him to do in terms of consulting and. Um, you know, whether it's informal or whatever, but um, everybody speaks highly of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it, it would, in, 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 the, we, in the interim, maybe what the best course of action is to do an interim appointment, um, you know, and, uh, but Casey, you have some thoughts on that? No, I had said that before when we met on the 13th that there was different paths that the select board could take. And so yeah. you could do an evaluation of, the divisions, and you could do it from a consultant's perspective. You could do it from a more long-term perspective, like we did with SCEMS, where we yep. had an interim director or an interim chief right. that came in and, and worked and dug into things and reported back to the Board of Oversight, to the administrative staff, and to the select board. So there's different ways you could do this. The, the yeah. third option is to put the vacancy out. But right. I think we've identified over the past several weeks that there's there's well, outliers right. that we want to nail down more. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, for sure. I know it's it's things that he and I have talked about. Yep. But you tell us where you want this to go. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we'll start to implement what we need to implement, depending on funding and, you know, situations. So, again, because of my ignorance, my question is, is there time that we can sit down and break out all these things mm -hmm. and be able to we could do a, come up with a one separate meeting right and then go through each one of these mm -hmm. right. yay or nay and how it's going to work and again <clears throat> i i don't see any reason why a lot of these things can't fall under the highway super but to have someone else doing the job mm -hmm. itself yep. it right help to you know to facilitate things a lot easier yep. and I don't see why the state wouldn't allow somebody to come in to, yeah. to assist us with this type of thing, especially if we make the request, yeah. the right. official request. Because yeah. they've and been well, very... This actually would be on his own time anyway. I was going to say. It wouldn't be through yeah. MassDOT. Yeah. Yeah. It would be more of, hey, MassDOT, do you have a problem if I fly on the side? And right. I can almost guarantee you they're going to go, yeah, whatever. So just a consultancy about, situation. A consultancy. Yeah. You know, and, and for a, a limited period of time, just to, you know, yeah. to spend the time he needs to look at what the about operation it. does. Exactly. Whether whether it might do one thing more effectively than another thing, and, and I agree. so, um, and we, you know, your your uh, your assistant um, Chris Miller has been filling in various times for long periods of time, um, you know, because of health issues and other reasons, and uh, you know, so he's also interested in the job. So um, I, I wouldn't be. 
I think we need to get the evaluation before we make any determination about whether we go First. out for another job or right. you know what path we want to follow there. But in the in the meantime, you have a date when you're going to retire. Yeah, and we want to respect that. Yep. Um, so, you know. Uh, maybe what we should do then Let's is try to try to have a meet a separate meeting just about mm -hmm. this topic. Try to get Chris Bouchard available for that meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know come up with a game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense? Uh, that make, makes perfect sense. And yep. and if you could, as you know, because if if you email me directly, <clears throat> obviously there's there's no. Uh, Um, yeah, yeah, I uh, know. Uh, open, open meeting, meeting law, law issues. So it, is, if each one of you go ahead and individually email me any tops, topics, mm -hmm. thoughts, questions you may have, then that way I can be prepared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, I'd love to be able to just sit down and just lay everything out in front no, of you. No, be good. I like be good. It's a little bit of a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> Here, lay on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us how you last 15 years, 18 years of it. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, that sounds like a plan. I, right. Do we have an idea when we want to try to? Your last official day is July seventh. Official, excuse me. Official last day is the fifth. The but fifth. I will be gone at the very least by the twenty seventh of June because right. I fly it's out to vacation, Utah and well for a show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Yep. All right. So, so we got we got next couple of weeks really to get right. On I mean, I know that we don't have anything on the fifth. Yep. At this point. Right. Um, but I, I could do the fifth. What about you, Blake? I'm sorry. The you fifth, meet, can you meet next Wednesday, can you, meet you think we could do a fifth. one topic? Really one topic? Yes. All right, so we'd look to do that at the 6 o'clock at the moment. But yeah, we can adjust if needed. You know, depending on availability. June 5th? Uh, mm -hmm. June 5th. June 5th. June 5th. Yep. Okay. At 6? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want this to be the only agenda? Yes. Item? Yes. Literally. Unless there's an emergency or something. But yeah. yeah. Which they seem to be popping. Always <laughs> mm -hmm. something. The fifth at six. The fifth at six. Mm -hmm. yeah. June fifth at six. Okay. Um, and um, I'll work with you to, you know, maybe we can w reach out together to Chris Bouchard and see if he's available. And certainly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've got a cell phone number, so. Yeah, Probably I figured you, you have a much better chance of getting him here than I do. Yeah. Uh, and like I say, and Chris, Chris is good people, he really mm -hmm. is. I, mm -hmm. I think that's, to be honest with you, that's a win-win for the town, it really is. Can I uh, jump over to... Um, yeah, I was going to suggest, oh, you were, while okay, he's right. here, yeah, let's do that. Here. So instead of doing the first read on the electrical plumbing, I wonder if we could just pop up to the, the transfer station employee. Yep. Um, I was going to suggest we then take, after you go through the transfer station employee, maybe you take up the item of unanticipated since oh, yeah, we exactly. can do that too. Oh, yeah. We'll kill all three. All three at yeah. one time. Um, so we, uh, our transfer station employees are, are under $20 all around us. Um, in the communities around us, they get between $20 and $25 an hour. Um, they don't work a lot, but they work hard, and um, we've been wanting to um, bring them up into compliance, you know, the compliance, but just on scale with the other communities around. Um, and we've been chatting this around for a little bit, but um, I wasn't really sure the process needed, and I think wanting to talk to you about a bit about where, what step we need to bump which to get them over the 20 an hour. I know we typically would, so some people started, you know, because of the job was a entry level job, they started at 15, they could be here for years and still at like 17 bucks an hour where everybody else around us is paying 20. Correct. Um, and again, it's not a lot of hours, but it's hard work and they do a great job. And I, we just, I just feel like it's, it's the right, uh, and the weather. I mean, uh, it's hot. It's cold. It's hot. It's, it's cold. It's raining. I, I, I think we only closed twice last right. year because of the cold. Yeah, yep. it was brutal. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, because Jim was like, "I'll work." Yep. No, I'm I like, reached no, out. You want? You're gonna go home. I reached out to Brenda and asked about, okay, what's the process needed to do that? She said the select board would need to take a vote, yep. but talk with you first on what positions would need to go where to get them above that. 
um, because we wouldn't just say everyone gets a flat 20 because they're all on a comp scale, so we would adjust them to a certain point that would get them over the 20. Correct. Um, and I wasn't sure how many employees you have at the moment. Is it just three? Uh, technically, I've got five. Five, okay. But three are active. The other <laughs> two are fill-ins. Yeah. Um, and the only other time we utilize them is for sticker sales, which sticker sales start this Saturday. Oh, yes, they do. They do. And at the station. Can, Fees are the same can, as last year. Can you talk about um, the cost of having sticker sales handled through the transfer station? Uh, you mentioned it to me the other day, and I was just wondering, um, you know, if you had any thoughts about efficient use of... Okay, like, so, so basically, um, for, for sticker sales, um, during the week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, if you go there for a sticker, you may have to wait a little while, because that's our standard employees to go ahead, not standard, our normal everyday employees that are, will take care of that. So if there's a line, I apologize, it may take a little bit longer. If you come in on a Saturday, we're going to have a dedicated person there through yeah. the month of June, um, and that gets you up to July, so that will give you four weeks to be able to go ahead and purchase a sticker there ahead of time. Yeah. Um, we will go two weeks into July, so we'll have a total of six weeks on site. And after six weeks, either you're going to have to purchase them Tuesdays and Thursdays, because we will not be selling them on Saturdays, because it's too insane for the guys there yep. during the normal week, right. or you can do it online. Yep. That's online is pretty efficient. Online right. is extremely efficient. I want to say there's like a $2 fee. Some sort of because credit card user, process. It's a credit card yeah. process. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's it's not much, but it, I know right. it's like a couple of dollars. Right. Yeah. So save you um, the time hanging around the transfer station waiting for somebody to help you. Yeah. Right. Uh, sticker sales or, or sticker costs are the same. Bags are the same, and then we're eventually going to talk about bulky items themselves. Um, because I did, you did have a little bit of information in front of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to. Um, I know that. Uh, I mentioned to you, and I don't know if you've had a chance yet. I don't know if Jan Amin has any grants or trying to get some signage, or if we should just we have it in the budget to buy some signs. Yeah, no, I, I talked with Jan. We're we're getting some more signs. Okay, great. Made up for for the what do you call it? I and mean, then I was the really kind of hoping until waiting until after July first, but yep. And the bulky item like pricing, we used to be on the shed, but of course we got a new shed. Right. So well, actually, that right there is, is should be being hung on the dumpster itself each yeah. day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Um, so that sign that was hanging on the side of the building which should be physically either on it or leaning against it. And is there, okay, right, because that's the only one that we take items and everything else is like Correct. metal you can throw in. Correct. Compost you throw in, recycling, all of that. Okay. Yeah. And then Paper. we're getting other signs that kind of say, I know the only one we have is in Spanish at the moment, but the other one blew away. Uh, but for, for everybody else in English, we'd want to yeah. sign up. The do's and the don'ts. The so, and don'ts. Yeah. so then, um, just so we identify the th the three main employees on this list are, I'm showing here, Mr. Schaefer, Mr. Yep. Kamenyuk, and yep. Rutkiewicz. And so, how do you pronounce that? Rutkiewicz. Rutkiewicz. All right. Um, and they all seem to be at the same level in in terms of payment. That's on this sheet right right here. Is that? Am I reading that correctly? FY twenty four. Seventeen ninety-five. That would be correct, and <clears throat> so that would put them in step two, and according to the landfill revised class count for FY twenty twenty-four. Oh, do you have that somewhere? Yeah. That? It was in our oh, package. it's in the pack. It's in the pack. Great, yeah. thank you. And yep. <clears throat> so we're looking at potentially moving them up to like step six, which is almost $20 an hour. Um, and why is this becoming important is because, you know, the, the, the economy we're in right now, everybody's getting paid more for, you know, you can get $20 an hour to work at McDonald's. Not that any of these guys would want to necessarily work at McDonald's, but, um, you know, it's, it's, Which, oh, yeah, it's at the down. top line. Um, so, so what are your thoughts, Trevor? And then I'll ask Blake. My thought is to put them at a step seven, so they're at twenty thirty-one an hour. Okay. And then any. Um, do, and you said you have others that are at. Um, like I think you have Adam Kolakowski as a part-time person, or. Uh, at, 
uh, Andrew. Andrew. I'm sorry. Andrew, Andrew Kolakowski is one of the more full timers. Right. Uh, Rukevich is my part timer. Okay. Yeah. I, I messed that up. That's okay. And then but he's only been working for us for. Yeah. Less than a year. Six months, yeah. eight months, and his pay scale is somewhere right around like seventeen fifty, I think. Right. Yeah, he's step one at this point, right? Right. Yep. So, um, I mean, the other two gentlemen have been there working consistently. Years. Right. You so know. Jim Schaefer came in in 2019, Cabana came in 2020, and Rocky came on in 2022. Yep. But you say Rocky is... He's a he, he's my part timer now. Okay. Andrew took his place. <clears throat> okay. Uh, he works. He he's a retiree from the state, so he's gonna be cautious on how many hours he gets. Sure. Otherwise, it messes with his insurance, right. and he was starting to get too many hours. Right. Mm -hmm. He stepped off a little bit. Um, well, I would certainly be inclined to look at um, Jim and Kyle, um, and you know, for the for Rocky in terms of. He's been there for a while, but I mean, his pay raise is going to limit his hours even more, right? I'm sorry? He would have to limit his hours even more if he gets a pay, pay raise. Uh, yeah, Rocky, like I said, Rocky, he's only brought in now for what little I will have him will right. not affect him whatsoever. Okay. I mean, because literally he'll be utilized maybe every other weekend for, so I'll use him for it, uh, 32 hours. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, that won't affect him whatsoever. A month. Right. 32 hours uh, That's 32 hours over the next six weeks. Oh, six right. weeks. Okay. So, and then after that, after sticker sales are done, then he's only a fill-in. So that's only if somebody's sick. So, mm -hmm. so just, I just wanted to oh, ahead, give Blake a point. chance to, you know. Uh, I, I think that, yeah, we do have to bring this up. There's no question about it. Um, For FY25. Or yeah, I mean, we could do it as of July. Would, you, would that be as right? right now? I think you got to make sure we have the money. Yeah. I mean, I because there can... is a financial financial yeah. impact about making this change. Yeah. Yep. And I so, think we have, I think do we, we have the money? money in the reserve fund? We, we talk about something else for a minute. Sure. I All might right. be able to give you the answer. To that. My, so my my thoughts are: anybody that works at that transfer station should be at least at step seven to get them over twenty thirty one an hour, regardless of how long they've been here, um, and how often they work, uh, and then. Um, those that have been here consistently for for a while, um, like Jim has been here constantly and is always outside the norm of doing a ton of stuff um, and looking out for everybody there and trying to get things improved. Um, you know, maybe he's he's up a little bit higher on the scale, at, along with uh, the other long timers. Kyle, Kyle has been there quite a, quite a while as well. Four years. Yeah. Do you um, have one that's in charge of the other attendants? We don't. Uh, Jim kind of takes a leadership kind of role. Rocky's pretty independent, although he's not there as much anymore. But um, uh, I think you know Kyle probably takes takes a lead from Jim or something like that. But I'd let they they yeah they. I mean, they're not all there three days a week, right? right. I mean, correct. Kyle is there one day. Yeah, everybody's no more no more than two days a week. Yeah. So. Yeah. So sometimes Jim's there alone, mm -hmm. or with with some other helper. Right, right. Kyle's each, there each alone. Each person works two days. Yeah, yeah. And then, right. Yeah, it's the same. Um, all right. So transfer station right now, not including this payroll that's up and coming. Sorry, let me support that second. Yep. One thing too is that none of these people get health benefits because they're all right. under twenty. Correct. All they're, they are all under I could twenty hours a week. I, I I can make it happen. I can make it happen. This payroll. If okay. You want. Well, we have to be careful about that because we yeah. have a set schedule right now, and yeah, you know well. what's what's the. I, I think the board needs to identify the parameters under which they're going to make that decision if they choose to do it and what the effective date is. So if you say you can do it, can you I, handle it into the next I, fiscal I, year? I can do it. Because we didn't plan it that way. Yeah, right. correct. No, it was definitely not planned that I way. Mean, I mean, I suspect that if we did it with the beginning of the new fiscal year, that the, the people would be appreciative. I mean, the employees would be appreciative. They, you know, it's, it's, it's a few weeks' sure. wait. But... Um, would, that be, would that be beneficial in any way to us, 
completely yeah. up to I'm not saying we should do that. I'm no. just asking you. I feel like uh, we have the money in the budget, I think, to do it. Um, I, I would do it now. And then... Um, well, that carries forward, so here's yeah. the other issue. If you change it to step seven now, mm -hmm. right. go generally that is. person could expect to get another increase. Right. You need to think about that. Well, that's why I thought about that. That's, that's why, why I thought about that. That's why first thing. Look, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you did your research about other other communities, there is a variability. They're not correct all in the 20s. I mean, they're correct. Yeah, it varies. Sunderland is, I think, or Waitley is the most generous. I think they're like 25 bucks an hour. Right. Um, so, uh, but that's why I was looking at step six now, mm -hmm. step seven in, in July 1st. You know, um, I don't know, but Trevor, you have a different thought about that. So and then I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Blake, you know, mm -hmm. also chime in. All right. Um, I think I agree with the fact that we should probably start them at the lower step now and then six and then july 1st they go, go to seven. seven so realistically they're only at a six for two weeks two pay three. periods mm -hmm. right <clears throat> two to three weeks there so that's that's one way we could do it is that yeah. won't the last way. part of it cross over into the next fiscal year or how's that going to work uh, no july 1st um they're no longer a step six they automatically go a step seven okay yeah. which, which would bring them to the 2031 underneath the FY24. And when they reach the top of the scale, then they're at the top of the scale. They're at the top of the scale. <clears throat> and they move on to a different position that pays a higher or it goes into a different category. Um, and then other than that, it's just uh, whatever the uh, cola. cola is. Okay. So the other hmm. question to maybe think about is do we reevaluate the positions? Hmm. Well, the other thing is, is, is by the time that they get ready, because realistically we're into year two out of a five year, because every five years, my understanding is you're supposed to reevaluate the compensation plan. Right. But that being said, so you still got three more years, and in three more years, you go ahead and you look at it all over again. So mm -hmm. I don't we know. We don't have a hard and fast rule for that. I'm sorry? We don't have a hard and fast rule oh, okay. for reevaluating I, I, I'm sorry. compensation. I thought it was a five year. But Depending. whatever it may be, whenever you decide to do yep. it. Mm -hmm. We should do at least one position, like one, one title, at least one, probably more than one a year. Um, and this, this could be one of those things because what does the job look like now, whereas, you know, four years ago in the class, when the class comp started, right. it may have looked different. Mm -hmm. Um, that's long term. That's a good way to think about it. But right. uh, it sounds to me like the board wants to make a decision about changing pay rates tonight. Mm -hmm. So the path that you've outlined, which is change the pay rate effective immediately, it's to step six, and then on July first they would move to a step seven. Um, is that what the board wants to pursue? And then longer term, look at the position descriptions and the duties themselves. My inclination is to start them at a seven now, and then they would jump to eight in July. But that's, you know, that's just my choice. But um, well, what's the budgetary that. impact, Kevin? Because uh, I, I, what's the step eight? Money it's twenty. Uh, twenty step eighty-two. Step eight would be twenty eighty-two. So and we're talking fifty cents difference. Yeah, because I got to look at I got to look at FY twenty four or FY. So we're looking at like a, a ten dollar uh, pay period, right? Or a ten dollar a week increase mm -hmm. if they went from to step eight um, versus step seven. Let me just take a real quick because right, if anybody remembers how we did our budgets. I am like bare. He's, he's the, he has a very tight budget. Right. That's, I, that's I, why I, I lean towards cut, the step would, six. I would request from, cut. from reserve if, um, if we had ran into trouble. FY25. It would be tight. You may end up having to make a transfer at the end of the year. But if it does, it won't be very much. Right. Or mm -hmm. fund it. Because if, we, if, we, funding or or if we had the step seven now, would in FY25, I mean, would that? 
the it's fifty not, cents like make said, a it's difference. It's not going to make a super huge difference. Right. I'm just like I said, I'm just looking at what I got left over for now for mm -hmm. monies for for salaries. Looking at what I anticipated for next year because I always throw in extra hours mm -hmm. for sticker sales and stuff like right. that. Right. You know, um, at a higher rate is usually how I try and figure that. Um, yeah, could I do it? I mean, because realistically. It, most know in case Blake doesn't know. Um, when, when you're looking at the budget, you've got all the line items. As long as I don't overspend that bottom number, right, you that's all adjust. counts. Yep. If, if I steal from one to pay five to, to take away from six to give right. to seven, it's fine. That's my prerogative within my budget. Mm -hmm. So as long as I don't overspend that bottom number, I can take from another line item and utilize it. Um, historically, line items, when, when I first took over, they were, were whatever line had money in is what you put it to. Well, that doesn't right. give you, that gives you zero information. So ever, ever since I took over, it's always been, hey, if I ever spent one line on it, I overspent it. I took it from here to cover it. Right. But if I don't really tell you what it is, you can't adjust. Th then yeah. I'm just throwing in the dark. You right. know? So that's why I've always tried to be as transparent as absolutely possible make sure that you know we're really doing the proper time. what would the impact be at the end of the year if we went from going to a step seven or going to a, a step eight for the year for the uh for the fiscal year yeah. um all together by the time you're all said and done i don't know ballpark right off the top of my head not looking at it uh i don't know maybe three grand 3500 i'll close my temp I'm just trying to do that in my head too. Oh, yeah, and, <laughs> I, I, and I'll be honest with you. I'm just kind of throwing it out, I and mean, it's really not that much money for what it is. For what they do. For what they do. I mean, yeah, it's it's not pleasant. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's. I don't know. You're talking almost Six, on the dollar, realistically. Yeah, it's it's like two thousand bucks or something. I, I I might I might. You got five people. I'm only calculating the three main people. Right, which so. inadvertently is really all you're looking at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so twenty three hundred dollars so a year is not bad. My next question is, why is this coming up now? Right now. It's it was mentioned. It's been brewing for a it's while. It's been brewing for a while. They've been asking, you know, when I, I'd go to the dump, they would say, Hey, you know, every other town's making more money. Anybody you know, so we've been talking about this for probably a year. I've been hearing it and I said, Well, you know, when budget season comes up and it lo I lost track to tell Kevin about it, so he didn't have it figured in his numbers. And then I didn't realize it needed a vote of this board. I thought it was a direction. And then talked to Brenda, it needed to go on, um, you know, they're on the comp plan, so it isn't just a flat 20. It's, you know, as other towns <coughs> might just do a flat 20. So it's been talked about for quite a while. And, you know, th this, this other jobs in town have been kind of, a, as we, Hiring people have been adjusting from COVID times, and um, these have just kind of stayed pretty flat and kind of under the radar, so not seen, not adjusted. And I just think for the amount I mean, of work. But this they doesn't do. happen with anybody else that works for you. This is just the, the mm -hmm. dump itself yeah. mm -hmm. that you're running into this issue. Yeah, because they don't know. Well, any. everybody else I have is uh, union. contract unions. Okay. Union contract. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a different, different animal. Yeah. 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 Next so, year, that'll be your joy. Yeah. <laughs> 2025. Yeah. So, so, is that what it was, Tim? It was like thirty-five hundred. Well, it was. It was. I, I. I was thinking it's with three guys. It was about two thousand bucks, and with the other two guys that are in there, yeah, um, yes. you know. And the the question is, are we talking about unilaterally raising? You know, every everyone who works there is going to go to this step, mm -hmm. or are we saying that? The person who's been there six months is going to go start at a different step. I mean, these are questions, you know. Yeah, for me, I just think everybody it's simpler, should be able to start. It's simpler. Yeah, um, they should all be on that same same step. <clears throat> so, so is that going to turn into what the starting point is when we hire when he hires somebody else to take that position? That's where they're going to start. I, I feel like that makes sense because it, you know, you hire somebody else down at. So we have to we have to actually reclassify this and get no it it'll up. stay here. It's just it's just when we when we hire somebody or when he hires somebody we you know people would be there or you won't yeah you're shaking your head the next the next <laughs> lady or yeah, uh, man I think I think I feel comfortable making a decision about the people that are here now yeah. mm. but I don't necessarily feel comfortable committing to doing 
-hmm. another course of action without consideration. Okay. So I think that the next person who's in your position needs to think about, okay, how, how should these people be compensated when yes, they come in? Certainly. It may be part of that evaluation, right, Tim? That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, yep. Because, yeah, I mean, we've, we've made decisions before when we didn't think about everything. Um, all right, so I'm going to recognize you, Skip. Uh, come up and, and uh, make a comment. Yep. Yeah. Sure. But Either then one. They said yeah. that one's working the last time I was here. Yeah. I just have a Skip Olmstead. I just have a very quick question for you. The town has a personnel board. Mm -hmm. Right. Why isn't this being handled by the personnel board? That's what you get a personnel board for. Yep. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your comment. So, but I would like to an answer. No, it's not on the agenda. So um, the personnel board um, is, a, is a logical thing to do. And, and maybe when we talk about, um, you know, making this decision tonight or making it next week, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can consult the personnel board if you think that's worth fine. considering. I'm fine with that, too. Um, since we're going to have this meeting, this one topic meeting, it's now going to be two topics. Um, How dare you? <laughs> why don't we do that? Why don't we just... Personnel board doesn't meet until meet. the middle of June. Okay, so they don't meet until the middle of the June. All right. We can, we still can consult with them before... I, I can yeah. send an email out, but yeah. I can't... Yeah, yeah I mean, they can't do they would it. They would have to, They'd have to go call through a meeting. And yeah. at this point... Um, they have three people we can only meet. I can only schedule meetings for them when all three of them can meet because yep. otherwise they don't have quorum. Okay. Here's an answer. So I'm willing to, I'm, I'm willing to take a motion on, on either delaying this decision or making this decision. So if somebody's ready to do that, I'm willing to hear. I'll make a motion to approve the landfill attendance for um, FY, the balance of FY24 at 2031. Step seven. Yeah. Can we you amend can that? Second, so and then amend it. Okay, second okay. for discussion. So, okay, so for discussion, um, what would your amendment be? Basically, that we we wouldn't do it this way again. Basically, we would go through the personnel board, and we would also. I'd like to see, you know, again, in, uh, with Kevin's descriptions and everything, he's got people that are working there, but there's nobody really that's in charge or that's getting compensated for being in charge or somebody is in charge but they're not being compensated so i think that needs to be addressed as well so that you know you do have somebody that's in charge of that facility even if he's only there two days and not the three well, days kevin's in charge of the division i i get that but i'm talking about somebody that's on site kevin's not on site so i mean as as i've seen the dump work, you know, there, there's somebody that tells the other guys, okay, you got to get out there and handle this or take care of that. So, and it's usually, I would assume, be the senior, senior guy that's out there, senior person. Mm -hmm. So that is consideration of reclassification or additional duties. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the part which, that I you know, didn't the want. The typical process is to go through the personnel board. Yeah. That's why I wanted to separate the two things and say. Um, we can we can go ahead and authorize a pay raise because it does seem warranted, but that the the overall thing should go through the personnel process. Yeah, do we and, evaluate? Um, and you know, if I were going to make an amendment, I would say I still like the idea of the starting go to step six on July first, go to the next step, and then get the personnel board working on this discussion with the the next interim director, discussing how this this group of, uh, of employees should be treated. But, so we've all got three different ideas. We certainly do. Mine's the only one with a second. <laughs> all right, so Look, now it's 20 the, way, bucks. the way we can get away with this is we can either vote for what he said or we can vote it down and come up with a new amendment. New, uh, so, see how this is all. Mm. Well, I guess he then got to call a vote. I'd so, like to... Um, or would you remove... Rem no. No, he's not going to remove his... I feel, I feel strongly that these guys deserve 20, 31 an hour. They yeah. work hard up there. 
All right, I'll go with you on this one. All right, so um, if there's no further discussion, let's uh, call a vote. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. And I would make a motion to uh, recommend to the um, personnel board to take up this matter to listen to Blake's idea of, of maybe there is um, a senior um, attendant, some attendant on, on duty during the day is discussed with the new uh, ten, uh, DPW head. Does that make sense? You know, as scheduling goes um, and uh, what those job descriptions would be, what, what extra duties they would have, what extra compensation that requires, that kind of thing. Or maybe there is none. You know, maybe we decide that it doesn't make sense, but I think it's worth having that discussion. Okay. I second that. Great. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you all. Okay. So is there one final thing that uh, you have oh, for us? Yes. Um, actually, because you were looking at, at one point in time, you are looking for a uh, recommendation for the rest of the transfer station costs. Um, you've yeah. already voted for your stickers and bags and stickers. Um, yep. Bulky item was the one that was in question. Um, that same piece of paper that you have in front of you, the, that spreadsheet. Yes. The red is bad. The black is good. Okay. Um, basically, without with taking salaries out, and, and we're talking for our current fiscal year. Yep. Um, we're down like thirty. We're, we're only bucks. off by like thirty-five hundred dollars. Yeah. But when you throw the salaries into it, we're off by like sixty thousand dollars. Right. So the, the couple that. things that we quote unquote we don't make money on, but the reasons why you're seeing a revenue is because these costs help offset all of the other costs that are within. The recycling. Example, the bags. Oh, you made $71,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we paid $20,000. We made inadvertently $51,000, but we paid $22,000 out in recycling. Right, and, and we pay you know, payroll. And yeah. payroll, and, and like I said, and all these down through here, you can, you can see where we've, quote unquote, we're bringing in revenues, mm -hmm. which isn't very much. Um, and and it, it's, it, it's really funny because the one that I continually was giving a hard time about was scrap metal. Yep. I am to the good $17.10. So. <laughs> nice job. So, You're going out on a high. That's it. You know, my 17 bucks. <laughs> um, but all the other ones are, they're, yeah. they're all associated costs. You know, you got to have the, the trash compactor. You got to have restrooms. You got to do the recycling, the hazardous waste, the scrap metal, the composting. Now the problem. composting, we had some. Now grants aren't in this either. No. Numbers, right? Exactly. So we did Correct. get some money for grants to for, to do a composting program, right? Our composting program is what our program is presently right now. Is we pay for a dumpster, and then they in turn bring it to Mountain uh, Martin Farm, yep. Martin's Farm to use for mushrooms. And to stuff. and then they go ahead and they compost it. So right. the composting people are or the 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 dumpster people are making. 17 bucks or 1700 um, something. You're making uh, about two grand a year yep. um, in the dumpster. Right. And then, and then it goes to them. Right. And, and I don't know if he gets paid, if, 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 if he gets charged a fee to dump with them or not. Right. I don't know. Right. It's, once it leaves the yard, I don't but care. It's just a cost to us. Correct. So but, that's a cost. But we didn't get a, we didn't get a, um, did we get any grant money from like Janamine to do a composting program? Like, hey, here's 2,000 bucks to, no. They just encouraged us we to get do it. The free it, was, it was strongly the encouraged. Bins. The, bins. And the only advantage we had is on the last, actually the last composting bill that we got from, from them, I started looking at it a little bit deeper. I'm like, what are these extra charges here? So mm -hmm. I reached out to Janamine because she's the person that runs this program. Right. You know, she, solid waste yes. management takes care of, basically manages our solid waste. Right. Um, she in turn looked at that and goes, no, that's wrong, you're right, um, okay. and reached out to them and made sure that those prices were pulled off of our invoices. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, it's like any place else. I don't know if it's accidental. I don't know if they sometimes just put stuff on there, hoping that nobody's going to notice. I'm not saying that that's what these people did, yeah. but that's why you continually have to be, do your due diligence when anything we're, we're looking at these things. And mm -hmm. that's something else that's probably really not brought up a whole lot in my job description, which probably should be, I was just thinking about it. Yeah. Is the but is the is all the bills? All the bills go through me. 
Right. You know, and, and it's not just highway. The only thing that was taken off my plate was wastewater. Right. Everything else I still deal with all the office buildings and, and everything yeah. else. So, yeah. Um, That's true. That Did your administrator it takes quite a bit of time you? to go through because I physically look at every single bill. Right. Yeah. Look at it, make sure we coded it right. How is it in there? Um, has it gone in the right right category? Yeah. Um, and you you have help a little bit yeah, for that, but you still that, need to check it. I still yeah, have, you have to, to go over it. look through, and, and you've seen how thick the stacks are. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. And historically, when you see those stacks, that's me. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, it, that's most anybody else's four or five pages. I'm the one that's twenty five or thirty pages pages deep. Mm-hmm. The revolving recycling and the recycling; those are two different items. Correct. What What is the difference? Those there? are an RDP fund. Um, basically, the RDP fund is put together by um, uh, Mass Deo, uh, DEP, mm-hmm. and there are some grants that end up coming out. Um, there's yeah. some small stuff here and there, and like you said, you can you can see where it's not that much. Right. Um, part of that, what it, what it boils down to, is is if you have trash, you get so many points. <clears throat> if you have uh, um, steel um, yeah. recycling, you get so many points. You get so many points, and at the end of all these points, they say, okay, this money. is what you get. Gotcha. So that is, that is how our number has increased, okay. which kind of has gone to kind of include the um, the swap shop mm-hmm. or the swap shed, whatever you want to call yep. it, um, which is something I'd like we'll to talk. Yeah, touch we can, on. But, we can touch on. Yep. Um, so long story short, my recommendation looking at this, I mean, obviously, you know, we're, we're fairly close as far as the physical end of it going in and out because we are supposed to be a pay as you throw, but part of the pay as you throw, my understanding, I could be wrong, is that is also supposed to take care of the salaries also. Mm. That being said, we're still down like $60,000. Yep. Right. Now that means, um, you know, we're, we're paying a little bit more, everybody's paying for, for the same service. Right. So my recommendation, considering we're keeping the bags and the stickers the same price, which I do believe we should because we are the highest in the area, there's no doubt about it, Yeah. Um, then the bulky item would mm-hmm. increase by $5. Right. So a minimum is $10 instead of five. Right. And I know a lot of people don't like that, well, but I tell you what, you can just show bring in here. $10 worth of stuff. Right. Okay. Or hold on to it and bring in $10, right. but, but, to, but to abuse the attendance because you don't want to take money out of your pocket, or worse, excuse me, write a check because we're not allowed to take cash. Right. Um, it's, it's, yeah, uh, we, we need to go up on the prices. Okay. And, and I think that is the easiest one to go up with. That is the one that I see is, is used, utilized the yeah. most of. And, and when you say bulky, is there different items that make there up are. that price? Like there's like, you know, I, oh, ten yeah, bucks uh, for like a rug a sink, or a, a, for a, a chair. Is, or... A sink is fifteen dollars. Yeah, a sink yeah. will go to twenty dollars. Okay. Uh, uh, a couch will go from twenty-five to thirty. Yeah. You know, and now I've got some people going, "Oh, well, as soon as you do that, now you can start picking up stuff on the side of the road." Well, well we do that once anyways. again, just for a public service announcement. There's areas that we have public dumping, and there are trail camps there. Right. So we will find you. Yes, we will. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this is helpful. Really good to go through this and see what's here. So but that, that kind of goes those two in just a real super short on on the, the swap shop. Yeah. I received that the, we do have a plan. Everything has been forwarded to your emails. When you get an opportunity, go ahead and take a peek at it. Thank you. It's broken down by... Um, Purpose, intent, rules, what the reuse boards use for, yeah. um, info, um, what they may be looking for, uh, and everything's already been put together. Mm-hmm. So, is, right. do, so we're you, working with, again, solid waste management, and I've been working with Amy up there. Okay. Is we, we've had the shed for two years. Right. It, it's taken her two years to get everything together because of multiple yeah. reasons. Why? Don't know. Don't Doesn't care. matter. But this yeah. is where we are at this point in time right now. So we are ready to open the doors. Do you, uh, what are your thoughts that the staff would manage still? No, no. Okay. that actually is all part of, of this plan here. Okay, so I'll read the plan. So Rick real short, down and dirty. If anybody is interested in working at the, at the um, swap shed, yeah. you can email DeerfieldSwapShed at gmail.com. Oh, nice. Whoa, we even have a Gmail. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. So all of the things that, that, that 
she was looking for, and she's correct, mm -hmm. is already documented in there. Great. Our employees will not, the regular town employees right. will not, will not <laughs> accept anything. It is only right. going to be the volunteers right. on the days that they're open. Yeah. The volunteers will dictate whether it's trash or not. Right. If Period. there's a discrepancy or a dispute, it's trash. You'll be banned from the transfer station. Okay. Abuse of employees, we're done with. Right. Good. So, I love that stance. Um, so anyway, so long story short, uh, everything's up and coming. Like I said, it's in your Great. emails. Thank uh, you. Everything you'd be possibly asking for should already be put together. There's presently right now six volunteers. This email in particular one went back out to them again, um, and then we'll see where they go. That's great. Um, great news. Thank you for that. So I Very think timely. that's it I got for those two, and I didn't know if you wanted to talk about any of the other. Yes, I would like to talk about, oh, sorry. Here Which one? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Which one? I'm jumping the um, gun. Well, you have some issues that are before us. The, the unexpected, is that... Yeah. We need to deal with. Yes, we have yeah. an item unanticipated. It started on Sunday. We received a complaint about a sewer backup. And so Kevin, Chris Miller, myself, we all dug into this. We got some help. We actually dug into other office records so that we could do some background. But essentially, I sent a brief email that basically said, look, we had um, a sewer backup at 20 Elm Circle. And... The people tried to get in touch with us. We responded to them. There was a series of back and forth conversations. Kevin and I picked this up with Chris Miller, who initially responded today. He, Kevin and I both spoke to the property owners. And what we were trying to do is dig into, sort of convey what the town's policies had been when we, it comes to a sewer backup along what appears to be the lateral line from the house to the main. Um, and go over the steps that may have happened, what the background information was, et cetera. Um, Kevin, do you want to, we did some research actually after we both spoke to the property owners, we did more research and checked in the inspections records to see if there were any building permits related to the property and found some more information, which I made copies of and included for you to review. But essentially, we, these people experienced a backup they called a plumber and the plumber came out and you know did some clean up removal of liquid from the line and attempted to snake the line um, and once the person and correct me if i'm wrong kevin once the plumber left i guess the line filled back and the basement then filled up with water again and prompted this series of back and forth um, do you want to go into more detail kevin sure um all right, so on Sunday the 26th at uh, 2101 hours, um, the resident went ahead and got in touch with control, uh, basically stated that they were having an issue uh, running into their basement, and this is the part that was a little bit confusing and we still have not been able to rectify or, or understand how this came about, but supposedly this once in part of the narrative says he being the resident advised someone from the town wastewater department would be responding within two hours so to clarify that one i reached out to every one of our employees i reached out to everybody that is within uh wastewater directly um eric actually had the on call this weekend yeah. so he had the phone he received no call Okay. Monday at uh, 1220 hours, um, went ahead, made another call back, stating that there was a backup. Um, they, in turn, Highway Super notified he will be having someone to handle it. 1220 p.m. is when the call came in. 1222 is when I was notified. 1224 is when um, Chris responded because I was out of state. He went over there, he checked the lines. Our main lines were clear. He attempted to make the phone call to the resident. No answer, we walked away. Um, and then if anybody's seen any of the, the uh, social media, you see where it's gone from there. 
-hmm. So that being said, our basically our policy is states that if there is a problem, you need to take care of your lateral. Your lateral technically is a line that goes from your toilet to the sewer main in the middle of the road. You are responsible from A to B. Once you reach the property line that does not say, not my problem anymore, which is unfortunately what happened. Gotcha. So they went to the We were told that they went out 100 feet. Okay. Now, they said that they went out 100 feet and they were not able to reach the main. Okay. I don't see how that is physically possible. Looking at the distances from where either main she could be possibly tied into. And then speaking with the gentleman this afternoon, excuse me, this morning, he stated that after the rotor rooter, it was quiet for a little bit, but then he was having a little bit of grayish water come. Okay. So, and I'm going to try and keep this, and these aren't exact numbers, but I'm going to try and keep a simple math for myself. All right. If he went out 100 feet, and from the house to the sewer, there's only 75 feet, where did that other 25 feet go? Hmm. All right. So, arbitrarily, if there was a blockage and he made it all the way to the main, you would think, well, plus, plus 25 feet, you would, you would clear you well, would clear it. Or if it's a broken pipe. Or if it's a broken pipe and it came out of the pipe and just went around. another 50 feet going across their backyard. Right. And then when they pull that line back, yeah. now you've got a two and a half inch hole that you just put in your line right. that now takes every bit of groundwater and put it into there. Right. What we did, Casey rain. and I, because Casey, uh, you know, we want to make sure that the two of us were there together when we called them. Said, look, it, you know, we, we understand the situation you're in, but you also have to understand where we're coming from. Also, right? We can't set a precedent of of working outside of our parameters. Our parameters say this you handle policy. you handle from your house to the main. If there's a tree root problem mm -hmm. from a town tree, the town will buy or the town will fix everything. Right. Well, to include to include cleaning the inside of your house. Mm -hmm. But if you go from A to B and it's plugged because of wipes or diapers or whatever, that's not on us. Right. Right now, they're making it sound like, and I'm not sure, maybe the conversation we had this afternoon might have softened it up a little bit. They're not willing to, to pay the line. to go the rest of the line. That in turn turns into a health issue. But that is... Um but if they went 100 feet and it's only 75 to the main. Uh, the, these are ballpark arbitrary. Ball we, we don't know. We don't know. And okay. we told well, them that. We don't know. And so frankly. We don't, put the line, we don't put the laterals in. No. You no, know, that's we don't. A no. And we didn't always right. obtain plans. Right. What we did, what we were able to find was sort of a, a concept in the building, the building permit application of where they thought they were going to put it. But there's no confirmation of that. Right. And frankly, you know, we gave my understanding, and this has been my past experience with other superintendents, is they, they ask us for the connection. We give them that approval. And generally, I think people keep track of when the, where these connections are going. But we can't guarantee that a plan or any kind of a sketch is going to come to the town. Right, because it's not um, town property. Because it's private property until it connects mm -hmm. to the main. Do you know um, there was discussion about other things on that street going on in the same time frame? Do you have any background on what Certainly. that might be? Certainly. Um, my understanding, and I can't confirm 100%, but I will give you a 99.9999% that she ties into, they tie into the east side of Elm Street. Because where they are, right in front of their house, either they can go to the left, if they're looking out of their house. Are they, they kind can, of in they, the middle of that horseshoe? They, they can go to the left and, yep. and hit the main right there. That proposed man. Or they can go to the right and hit a separate main over here. Right. The main to the right is the main that we had issues with two weeks ago. Right. We're being told ever since that happened, there's been a problem. So I'm sorry, but there's there's 150 feet of dirt between the two main lines. So well, one cannot. Oh, so they're not connected. They're one not connected. One and one goes to the other. Okay. In the drawings in this thing, you can see where 
The, if you look, there's a little dot right here. It says W, and and as you go around the corner right there, yeah. that looks like the the pipe that you're talking about, right? That's what I'm kind of looking at. Is is, is I'm assuming you, I'm assuming you're looking at this. Yeah. yeah. That chart. All right. So if you're looking at that right there, you know, again, but this is showing a proposed manhole at this point. Right. right. You know, but with all of that being said, so let let me let me roll back a little bit further for you. So the piece of paper that you have in your hand right now came from the planning board, which was, what was it, June 22nd, 1979, right. okay? His building permit was August of 1979. Okay. All right, now here's two things I just wanna bring up because this happens all over town and people need to be aware of it. All right, if there's a break in that pipe, it's probably broken because they utilize clay pipe, mm -hmm. okay? Which is clay common. pipe. Or, or and or transite, which is asbestos, was pretty much used a lot. Yeah. Right. So back in nineteen, the late seventies, mid seventies, um, EPA decided that hey, you know what? Back in nineteen seventy three, this is really bad. So they came out in nineteen seventy nine and said, you know what? We're going to ban this next year. Yeah. So now in their building permit. It specifies. It specifies it to use four-inch transite pipe four months before the uh, change. Yeah. Okay. Realistically, what that was, I can almost guarantee you that that was a financial decision. Yeah. Transite pipe was cheap. SDR 35 in the beginning was very expensive, and that's probably why they did that. Yeah. Um, and this goes back to, which, which I've always said all along, which is part of the sewer regulations that need to be looked at. Problem right. Right. Yeah. Right. My house, I did a tree in front of my house. My sewer does no longer work because of that tree. It's mm -hmm. a town tree, right. okay? It's a town tree within the town layout. But you know what? When I built my house, I should have put in plastic pipe. I didn't put in plastic pipe, so whose fault is it? Is it the tree's fault? Mm -hmm. Or is it the homeowner? Because if their pipe was plastic, the tree wouldn't grow into the pipe. I, I, it's that's a decision that's going to end up having to be made at some point in time. Because to be honest with you, there's a lot of clay this pipe. is costing us thousands and thousands of dollars every year. I want to say last year right. I probably spent well over twenty grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say the year before I spent probably twenty five thousand just in cleanups. Right. Right now, present year, I'm into about twelve thousand dollars worth of cleanups. And these are, yeah, because and the, of and town are, trees or an uh, issue within the line. Mm -hmm. Now, and unfortunately, lines. issue within the line, we have to eat because we can't prove where it came from. Mm -hmm. But the backup that we did have in that end, where we took care of two weeks ago, was disposable wipes. Yeah. We went 20 feet, and then we saw probably, no exaggeration, five to 600 wipes come down through. They came into a ball. We were barely able to get it out of the hole. It was ugly all the way around. Right. You know, to be honest with you, I should have took video of it, which I should have done. Yes, you should have. Um, but... Bless you. Bless you. Um, okay, so we're so we're at at the point now that they need to they need to snake their line. My opinion, blow it out. They need to do it. That's we the told policy. them that we would take it to the select board because yeah. um, they honestly. It's a my evaluation it of is. the discussion was they they really didn't want to hear us tell them that, but that's our policy. Right. And short of the sewer commissioners telling us to do something different, um, Kevin and I felt like we needed to bring this to the board so that you understood that we had done pretty much what we think we could do within the parameters of our own jobs. So if I mean, generally, the policy is the policy, but right. you know, it, it, you guys can tell us to do something different. You're the sewer commissioners. So do you have any, G, do we have a GIS of that? I know we're gonna get this all mapped out with the well new. once again it's it's a it's a lateral we don't GIS no that. but but the main out on the road so is it so the pipe comes down that that both sides of the street there is that the idea you got one on one side one on the other yeah but the one on the right hand side like like let's just it's say we're coming from the vets road, we take a right on the elm yep and then we take another right on the elm circle so now we're heading north yep right and all the way that one right there goes pretty much straight now, if you go to the other one, it yep. goes around the corner, yep. goes to the end by Wally's, yep. takes a left, and then there's like 150 feet difference between where this one ended and yep. this one ends. Okay. So, and again, I can't tell you 100% which until, one they go until into. Until they, because we, we offered up, 
you get it clear. We'll put a camera in. I'll put a camera in there. Right. And then once a camera goes in there, I, we'll can, I can locate it and I can tell you exactly where your line goes. Right. And if, and, and if I would assume that the rotor rooter person could have done that too, right. whether that was a financial decision not to do that or not on their right. part, I honestly don't know. Well, and generally. hypothetically, had they done that and they ran it through and they found out that they went through the pipe well, then everything would have been solved right then and there. But long story short, I can't go back. So it's still water stopped for them, right? And, and the water's still, full. It's, it's got to get clear. Right. You get it clear, I'll look at it, and, and then we'll make a decision on where we go from there. Right. right. But it has to be cleared first. And if it doesn't, because one, you know, one of the things we try to explain to them, I say, I hate to be brutally honest here, I says, but which is cheaper? Rotor rooter? Or find someplace else to live because that's right. going to be your choice because you're going to get evicted out of your house. I'm not saying we're going to do it, right. but as soon as you start talking health, sewage, basement, kids, whole nine yards, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but health agents are going to get involved. So I don't know if that maybe gave them a little nudge to go further within that. Well, I think, I mean, honestly, they... We didn't uh, hear anything else. The policy is to, to you know, clear the line so, yeah. and then we'll put our camera in. House. Exactly. We'll take a look. So but it's your out. judgment that, um, you know, it I could very I, well be tree roots the entire yeah. time. If it goes that direction, I can almost tell you that it's going to be tree roots. Yeah, I mean, but I, they refuse I, to do their part. I drove. And I can't. I do drove this. over there today to talk to the woman. Yep. Um, just to say, the select board's going to talk about this tonight. You're welcome yep. to come. Um, you know, the way that there is there is a a manhole at the at the um, well. If you're looking Corner. out from the house. It's the left-hand corner of that right, driveway. Yeah. There's no trees in there, but the roots could be under the under oh, the sure, driveway. Sure. Yeah. You know, well, so it could be almost anything. But um, she was saying that they've shut the water off and the water is backing up, implying that somehow the sewer is leaking backwards to their house. Correct. And we tried to explain that to her. I, I, I said, all right, simple, simple physics here, okay? Your house is higher than the line. Right. The line is lower than your house. If I have no blockage in my line, I can't possibly be putting anything into your house. And the other houses are draining. And everybody, and, it, and, it, and, it, and, the rest, every the rest of the line is open. She was also mentioning that her neighbors that seemed to be fed by the other line mm -hmm. were exper still experiencing problems, and I don't know that, uh, that. I talked with her this afternoon, actually, because of some other situations that are kind of going along with the cleanup because she wanted a certificate the whole nine yards, and none of that was brought to my attention at that point. Yeah, well, so this is why I'm saying I so, say I, I didn't want to get in between you right. and, and her. I just wanted to say we are sure. concerned. We, right. we, we want to help you if we can. But it sounds like what you're saying is gray water. That sounds like soil water just, you know, it's a possibility. Possib I mean, possibly because realistically, I mean, if it was sewage, yeah. wouldn't it look like sewage? Wouldn't it smell like sewage? The yeah. bat, and with all the rain we've had in the last that was my question. The past uh, couple of days, I mean, because yeah. if they rotor rooted on Sunday if or, or if whatever they rotor rooted. off into a hole, yeah, they literally made a hole in there. Well, I'm not saying that's what happened. No, it could, but, my but I'm just trying to think in my head, you know, I'm just looking at how far it is from A to B, and if you said, Truly put 100 feet out. Well, this, it didn't look like this, they could have gone 100 feet to me. This agreement on yeah. Mar in March of 79 uh, between John Barczewski, is that, was that, is that the house? Or yeah. Is that, yeah, that's the house. That's, that's, so, that was the house when it was built. Yep. And right. that was to put a, um, it was to allow to, to put a, um, a line connecting the sewer line from the end of the proposed sewer line to their property, correct? Right. Right, so John J. Transit pipe. Yep. John J. is the owner, or yes. was the owner. Yep. Unfortunately, he's passed since. Yep. The contractor was John B., the builder. Well, Julian Brenton, that was the builder that was doing the. And he's the one that put the initials on that part of which my understanding is part of the deed. Right. The property, because that's mm -hmm. where this came from. Right. Stating to go ahead and put in transit pipe and that and, and a transit pipe But it, it seems like a transit pipe was um, Right to that first line that's drawn out here Again, you know, it's really kind of tough to tell I look at that, you know, because the The manholes right here. Yeah, because you're looking at this one right here, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the lines and even what What this was photocopied off of was not clear. Yeah, 
You know, and that's why I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm on the fence looking at it going... Which, which hole it went to, you mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm really not sure. Okay. You know, because then the other thing is keeping the back in mind, you have another paper there, which please don't even bother looking at. Because right. Because this is from the, the That 40s, was from the Registry of Deeds. Showing was... something completely different. Just mm -hmm. showing that there was sewer all the way around and... Right. And, but everything was all proposed. Is, is the property that's in that hole, it's this one right, yep. right in front of the yep. hole? Yep. Okay. Right there. So they come out and they go right to the house because because right here is the house, like yeah. so, and the manhole is actually right here. Off the road. They would have to go like that. There is not a hundred feet between here. There's not a hundred feet between so here. So the proposed was here, but that's not where it went. Correct. Right. Right. And then this one right here is right here. There's a manhole there. And it goes to there, and it makes it way down the street. In between oh, right there is where we had the problem two weeks ago. So they could have gone here, they could have gone here. Or here. Correct. Right. Gotcha. But my assumption is by just by looking at it and by looking at this, I'm assuming, I know poor choice of words, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they went on the east side. So, right. so to, to try to bring this to an end, I mean, do you have, you have a recommendation which you gave to them, which is clear the line and we will scope it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Does that seem like the best advice for them or that will bring this to a conclusion the fastest? It would be. And um, so how do we coordinate with them getting their Roto-Rooter guy in there again to clear the line and then have us immediately scope it? I mean, don't want to wait for the water to re-infiltrate if they have perforated their pipe. Right. You we know, need to be able to then, tell them. You've well, it really boils down to who's going to pay for it. Right. If, if they're willing to go ahead and, and, and purchase, uh, or excuse me, and allow the service to happen, that, I mean, status quo will move forward, everything is good. I think more of the question do. is that you need to make a decision on is that they decide to hold their heels to the ground. Well, we'll deal with that after. Okay, well, you're gonna have to deal with it here pretty quick because yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. And so we've, we've reached out and notified people that they could expect to see hear calls, but what we, um, I mean, we talked to the Board of Health agent um, in case that came up, but mm -hmm. what we want the board to do is, you know, let us know how you want us to communicate back to them because, frankly, mm -hmm. we didn't we hear didn't. them really acknowledging what the policy is, why the policy is in place, and what the next steps were. That's, that's their choice, but the mm -hmm. policy is the policy, and it is for everybody yep. in every place for all time. So. They need to clear their pipe. If it turns out that it was caused by a tree from the town, mm -hmm. we'll take care of it. But until then, it's their job to figure that part out. If it's a block at the main, obviously we would take care of it, but we look in the main, the main's empty. And so from their house to the main is the problem. That's their property. They need to take care of that. Okay. And then if it finds out there's something wrong, that it is our property or our tree or our route, we'll mm -hmm. find that out with a camera and yep. then we'll yeah, take I mean, it I from there. Exactly. Yeah. Agreed. So um, generally what we've always done, correct? correct? So what we're saying is that we want them to create a situation where we can run our camera through there to the main. Correct. Yeah, we, we would like them to clear the blockage that's allowing sewage to go back into their house. Right. That is what we would like to do. Yep. And then in turn, we will go down with our camera to find out why the blockage happened and why it went back into their house. Right. So, so it's kind of a help me help you. Right. You know, yeah. if you don't go to this step, I can't help you. If you don't go to this step, it's gonna get very ugly for you. And we don't wanna go down that path. We don't, we're, I, I understand where you're coming from. Young family, financial. It's expensive, yeah. Woes, no holding yards, I've been there, I lived it, he I has, understand. Literally. Anything we can do to help them, or we will, but our policies are our policies, and like you said, and if we bend for one, we just decide a precedent for everybody else in no, the world, we just, and, and we that's don't, not what a town should do. We don't own the lateral from the house to exactly. the main. Correct. Period. They're responsible for the lateral from their house to the main. Yep. Once it hits the main, that's all on the town. Right, and we're willing to work with them. We've told them that. We just, for sure. you know, I just can't we didn't for feel like we were getting, making any headway right. with After the property that, owners, okay. we shouldn't which is why we asked you to go in. Listen. That's the other part of it is, is that I think that's a liability. If we start going into homeowners, correct. oh yeah, well, no, that's, correct. that's the other part. You know, yeah. Yeah. we I mean, did tell them that. We technically we don't have the authority to work on someone else's property. I mean, right. Right. we've in the past when we've had to evaluate an issue and we've needed to get on somebody's property, we use a right of entry. Right. 
Um, Which is what we're going to use if we're going to be bringing our camera down into that house. Correct. We will put together a my eyes and cross my T's on this. Kevin will sign it. Mm -hmm. um, so. But th these are the methods that we have, except we can't see anything. We can't. I mean, generally, snake it's not up, up to us to camera it either. either. No, 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 we, no, it's not actually. We've looked at our main. Right, but realistically. But we will help. Yeah, we're. Right, we're, that's we're what we've said. We right, so it sounds like that. That's what we need to do is yep. just basically say, look, communicate this. with them that you need to get you need to get Rotor Rooter or whomever right. in there to clear the pipe yep. and immediately notify us so that we can come, you know, or maybe even coordinate well, with us. Well, coordinate is basically what I when I talked with the landowner or the resident, I says when when you bring somebody in, I didn't say if, I said when you bring somebody in. Let me know. He will and be we there. We will be there at the same time. I says I will physically be there personally. To we want to sure see what the club is. Right. Right. We, yeah. we, we want to make sure that we, we need to know that we let these people know we want to help them. Did you really go a hundred feet? Right. I'm not saying that they didn't. We don't know. I don't it's know. It's easy that. to do that if it if I, it snakes I, I, out of the pipe. Again, again go I, feet I, there's too are. many parameters. There's too okay. many too many right. things that could be. Going sideways here. I think okay, you guys so, have handled it correctly. So we tried. We just we didn't feel like we were make, making much headway. So we are sorry to So take maybe up we time don't need it, to vote, but, but the consensus is yeah. that we we instruct the, the the DPW chief and the follow policy and the town administrator to explain the situation and and tell them what we can do, and that we will be happy to do it as soon as they arrange this, so that we can actually find out what the problem is. And I think the only other thing, and I'm not trying to put threats into it, but I think the the repercussions of their decision should be blatant mm -hmm. of if you don't do this and I can't get in there to see what's going on, this will be turned over to the health department. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're required by law to do Exactly. This. But you know, yeah. they don't know that. Just yeah. like there's a lot of other things Probably our next conversation. People should know, but they don't know. What's um, our next conversation? Are we ready to move on? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, shouldn't part of the instruction be that if it doesn't get rectified within a certain time period, that the Board of Health or the yeah, health I, that, inspector will be in there on, to make a determination as to the safety of the house? Yeah, for the health. I mean, you know, presently right now, my understanding is is is. Basically, make it sound like I don't think they're living there. I know the children have been moved from there. They're okay. living somewhere else. Good. I don't know if other people are the other yep. two are still there. That okay. I honestly don't know. All right. Um, cool. And did you want the last one anticipated? Sure. Yeah, what else we got? All right. So uh, we had a resident bury a horse. Yep. Oh yeah. Within five, well, well, six inches of a property line. If you go into this, this is not a zoning issue. If you go in to look at the extension service for UMass, which should be part of your packets, which I tried it to is, make it's, sure. It's, I didn't print it for oh, them, okay. but they so we've seen, seen it. Yeah. Super long story short, you have to be 100 feet away from private well, 200 feet away from a public well. You have to be 100 feet away from water. You have to be 100 feet away from wetlands and or, I can't remember what the other one is, but she's okay on that one. You can't be within 50 feet of a property line. Okay. You can't be within 500 feet of a residence. Okay. Five inches off the property line, closest resident is 100 feet. All right. So. Animals already been buried. Okay. Uh, the only reason why I knew is because I got a dig safe. Dig safe says, hey, uh, this is a real emergency. You need to come look at this because we had to bury a horse. I'm like, Who, what? Unfortunately, by the time I saw that, the horse has already been buried. That being said, um, I went through. I did a little due diligence. I brought a little information up. I yeah. brought it to the board. Um, I brought it to, to health. Uh, I've spoken with um, the building inspector. I have done more than my due diligence. Now it's completely up to the board on what you guys want to do and how you want to handle it. It's, it's the, uh... So we did do some investigation. We have a contact with, it's considered solid waste. Um, the way that, so Bob, we, this was really a group effort mm -hmm. to sort of dig into both these issues, but 
um, I guess Bob found some, Bob Walden, our building commissioner, found some information um, at DA, at Mass Department of Agricultural Resources, which can, is supposed to hopefully connect us with somebody at DEP because I guess animal carcasses are considered solid waste. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to talk to Dan Hall. And I'm happy to call Dan Correct. tomorrow. Yeah. I just didn't get a chance to right. do it today. Um, so we've got to figure that part out. But if the, if the animal was buried near a, some sort of water flowing mm -hmm. area, we're not sure what that means either. Right. So either way, I mean, if, if it, again, it's going to be a bigger problem. I'm, what may end up coming up, which is my general understanding, because any of the research I've done, you're not technically allowed to just bury a horse. Technically, you have to compost it, or you have to send it to some place to have a compost. Burial, incineration, or compost. With that being said, what there is is there's an actual protocol of before the horse is buried, you have to go ahead and put down a certain amount of manure, you have to put down a certain amount of bedding, you have to do this, you have to do that, put the animal in it, put this over the top of it. It has to be a mounted. Um, it cannot, it has to be six feet, minimum six feet below ground surface, right. but two feet above the water table, which we know that is not the situation over on Kelleher Drive. Right. So we realize there's a lot more that's gonna need to go into us. Certainly, Kevin wanted so to make sure you keep in the back of your mind. The longer you wait, does the resident want? It uh, nothing's even been said to the restaurant. No, we're still investigating the complaint. I just received this. No, but I mean, the complaint does the complaint. New complaint want went it? directly to me at nine thirty at night. Do on they my personal want phone. it to? Do they want it removed? Oh yeah, yeah they okay. do. And they it, do. As it, it seems to have violated a couple of things, like on the line and yeah. So we don't have a written complaint from the neighbor. No, no, you don't so, have written, you got verbal, but we have a verbal. All I have to do Which, is let them know, and and I can guarantee you, you'll have four written complaints. Okay, from, well, I mean, it seems neighbors. like we got to follow it, the process. It, it, right. I've got no problem with that. I can make the phone calls since I'm done here. And we also should, you know, loop in the DEP and well, the that's the thing. Yeah. As part of investigating, we were trying to gather more information. Yep, it doesn't sound like it was malicious. It sounds like it no. was just well, uh, no. uh, on on you know, not, not fully aware of the Correct. responsibilities. But the other side of the coin is, is you still got to do diligence as far as health for, for right. That's, of course. That's what I looked at. That's why I brought it to everybody's attention. Yeah. What you go from here, what you do from here is completely you on you. Clean? My hands are clean of this. What was the horse doing there? Oh, it lived there. So it was a, fa the it's farm. a residential area, correct? <laughs> it's not listed as agriculture or they should the horse have been there to begin with? Not part of highway department. I refuse to comment. So we did uh, the bill. The reason I we reached out to the building commissioner was whether it was a zoning issue, and so he doesn't think it's a zoning issue. Um, I don't know be. what the property is classified as. I don't know what the zoning is. I didn't look that well, up. Cause, cause I don't CDR? see why they would be concerned about what the water table is, how far away you are from from water sources or anything else. Right. What that well, any of that got concern. to do with zoning? I don't see it. I see that as all 100% health. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, but, I just think it. There's it others that make like things differently, and once again, that's now off of my plate. Mm -hmm. I will help you out wherever you can, however I can, but now this is... So further investigation yeah. is really so the we just the we need situation. A, we need a, a yeah, written so, complaint, right? Yeah, we need, okay. basically, we'll let, let's contact the complainants, okay. get something in writing. Meanwhile, Casey or uh, somebody else can do contact with the DEP yeah. about I'll the issue. You. And um, it's probably an oversight on the part of the person who paid oh, to have sure the horse buried. Is. But um, if it's not done correctly, Correct. then we have to yeah. take the steps to Correct. You know, to and deal with it. Safe. I spoke with the excavator operator, and probably for the first five minutes of the conversation, I was trying to talk him off the cliff. I'm like, dude, all right, you didn't do anything wrong. Calm down, all right? You know, it's like, <laughs> it, he was all freaked out. He really was. He felt really bad holding her. I had no idea. I'm like, right. You well, did what you were supposed to do. You being a contractor, you contacted uh, Dig Safe. Right. You were paid Thank to dig you. a hole. You dug a hole. You did what you were told to do. They were allegedly told that none of the neighbors had a problem with this. Um, there's a lot of extra that goes along with it that okay. doesn't need to be discussed right. here. But yeah. long story right. short is, is the discussion from the homeowner to the excavator operator was not 100% correct. Okay. 
Well, there was definitely some miscommunication yeah. and unknowledgeable about exactly. the process. So, so let's get a complaint. Let's get us moving. And so we, we've in, already started in the fast. investigating. Yeah, right. But these are the things that sort of pop up. So this was this was this so, morning. Yes. This, this is a health issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we have one of the health agents investigate? Well, that's do what the I, investigation on this. That's what I suggested this morning when I got the email from yeah. Valerie. Is this this doesn't sound like a zoning issue? It sounds like a board of health issue. Right. And, and then then it was like past the past the horse. Um, <laughs> nobody wanted to necessarily say that nobody they own this. So yeah. now we've done more research, but okay, it sounds like. Um, we need to complete the investigation by the end of the week because you know you don't want this carcass to be decomposing and it's uh, already you know yeah yeah so sooner the better okay all right i'll let valerie know okay. but i will call dan just because i know dan yeah. i can probably facilitate a conversation with dan okay that's great i That'd appreciate great. it thank you um that it <laughs> yeah, no, <I'm> <laughs> got anything else today any else? falling no, balloons it, man, or i'm done meteors yeah. hit the hit the building anywhere or anything like that <laughs> So, you got anything for me? No. Um, I was going to suggest about. Um, good to see you. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Have a great night. Casey, on the electrical fees, et cetera. Um, since this is going to be a first read, I think we need to have the building department chief come in and talk to us about this mm -hmm. at a meeting. Okay. So, Sounds good. If so you want agrees, a formal recommendation? Yeah, yes. and I want I want to just you know keep this under advisement um, so we can move on to. Yep. yep. Any, Sounds good. Anything else? I mean, the Leary lot, we don't really have any update on it, do we? We have that, we have that contract, right? That's the one where we want to authorize me to be able to sign. Okay, so we do have, um, it's part of the Leary lot, and there's some, um, Chris Nolan is away this week, but he gave you a fairly lengthy report. Yep. One element of the Leary lot is the CFI grant paperwork, and... Chris um, sent out a request to council to have council review the contract. One of the main concerns that council had was who signs the contract mm -hmm. because the contract initial contract documents had Chris Nolan as right. the signatory, and, he have that and it either it needed to be addressed in some way. And so what we did was we initially I took a look at the contract again and I changed it to Tim. Because okay. it's a $2.4 yeah, million dollar yeah, contract. The, the board would vote and yep. authorize the chair to sign normally yep. for a contract of that size. For sure. Um, it, admittedly, Chris has been the conduit yeah, between, which is, fine. which is fine. Yeah. So I think that's probably workable. And so uh, Christopher Dunn and I talked about this too. Mm -hmm. um, we, he reached out to the Federal Highway Administration contact and yep. she made an initial change. It still needs to be approved as to form on their side, but frankly, I think what we could do, because it does need to be signed by mid-June, what the board could consider is signing, uh, approving the contract subject to final uh, review by council and the FHA, Federal Highway Administration, and authorizing the chair to sign at his convenience which I think I actually wrote up as a motion. Right. Um, it's separate. But this was sort of us digging into some things and trying to get to a solution. If there was a change, so if, if FHA, decide, if Federal Highway came back and said, oh, we have this one other thing we need to do, we could fix that. We could work that out. Um, and then the chair could sign after that's reviewed. Because what we do is we coordinate, Blake, just so you know, when we have contracts like this, we coordinate with town council and their and, and whoever we're getting the grant agreement from and try to iron the language out. Um, the other concern that council had was the deadlines because they're very tight. So what I had initially said to Tim was maybe we have when Chris comes back he could just check the deadlines. But for purposes of approving the contract, it's it's a formulaic contract from the federal government. There's not a lot of wiggle room in it. Um, so I do think that it's possible we could go through the process of the select board considering approval and authorization for the chair to sign. And mm -hmm. then, you know, Chris can coordinate some of the deadline details when he gets back on Monday. Does and that make the, sense? Yeah, and one of the reasons why is because there is an RFP ready to go. Correct. And um, once, we, once we get the actual contract language, then we can release the RFP immediately. I mean, uh, I think... 
You're going to have, so the, the deadline for the RFP, I think, is the 12th of June. So we need to have the contract mm -hmm. done before then. So I'll make a motion to approve the, the agreement for the fiscal year 2022 and fiscal year 2023 charging and fueling infrastructure grant program between the Federal Highway Administration and the Town of Deerfield for $2,462,612.09 pending final deadline review authorizing the chair to sign at his convenience. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Nope. So the other part of this that's coming through here is another 615,000. Where's that coming from? So um, we have, um, originally when this project was proposed, it was gonna be funded by ARPA money. So there's a federal ARPA money that's available for that. There's also, a four hundred thousand um, dollar ever source rebate ev re related rebate infrastructure that, infrastructure that they they agreed to pay and now they're trying to um they're trying to dial back on that um, we think that the dpu is going to side with the town once this project starts and that they're going to say no the state legislation requires you to pay this money you've already agreed to pay it and you're going to pay it but we do have the, the ARPA money in reserve for that. There's also some um, MVP grants that we received to do um, climate uh, resiliency um, within the, the layout of the parking area. So swales, yep. um, et cetera. So that money will be made up using that essentially well. grant money. Okay. Um, you know, so. So essentially, we're not using any, any we're, using we're using federal money, money yeah. and, and so the ARPA and or, money plus other okay. grant yeah. funding sources. All right, it's not a real estate tax related thing. No. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Chair McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And if we need to do this again because they changed the contract, we can. We, we can, can so yeah. that would allow us the ability to just check, dot that I and cross that T in terms of um, deadlines and stuff. Okay, thank you for that, Casey. All right, next up. Um, I don't know that we have any updates on the town campus unless. I don't think so. No. Um, do we have any um, employment other policies? We don't. Um, I have some policies that you've already approved some policies. I'm going to send those to the personnel board, so I'll just back up real quick. Okay. Um, personnel board had a meeting on Thursday. They approved the public, super, the public work superintendent job description, but after this conversation, they realized it might change. Um, so we can take it back to them if, you, if we make changes. Um, but one of the other things I advised them of was the fact that now that the personnel bylaw has changed to a manual. Um, we drafted up, we took all the policies and benefits and everything out of the bylaw and incorporated it into a manual. I advised them that there's several additional policies the select board had created, like social media and IT, mm -hmm. that I will give them for their next meeting in June. Um, because we need to start adding these things into the draft policy manual so that we can get started you know, making sure that the manual is, encompasses what it needs to. So they're aware of that. Um, so for purposes of what I have to send them, just so you know, they'll probably start sending back after June, after the middle of June, they'll probably send back requests for policy consideration and approval. Mm -hmm. um, and then you already talked about the job description piece for the public work superintendent. Right. Yep. Um, I note that um, we have Actually, we have something from Chief Pachorek about mm -hmm. appointment of a... Yep, and so we, we also, have an appointment of a part-time police officer. And then we also have um, a, a letter from um, Anley Wolfcall about serving as the housing representative to the CPC. Is that something we wanted to deal with tonight, or is that something we wanted just to have on hand and then... Well, so. well we're doing appointments. We're going to be doing a lot of appointments at Soon, one right. particular time. I suggest right. we do Wait. them all at the same time. So. Yep. And it's fine with me. I just uh, up. I would like to appoint the um, police officer. Yeah. If we could. Yep. That's fine. Yeah. So uh, this is the honorable select board um, from John Pachurik, uh Junior Chief. Request for appointment uh, May 24, 2024. Dear honorable board, I'm respectfully requesting that Gerald P. Perwack uh, be appointed as a part-time police officer effective immediately at the standard tw uh, $27 an hour. 
Uh, Jerry is a retired Massachusetts State Police Trooper that was born and raised in Deerfield and still uh, currently still resides in Deerfield. Jerry was previously a firefighter. Jerry will make it a great addition um, as a resident and well-qualified officer, um, so respectfully submitted. I'll make a motion to approve uh, Gerald D. Perwick as a part-time police officer at the standard rate of 27 an hour, effective immediately. I second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. I just would like to say um, thank you to Chief and thank you uh, for Mr. Prowak for, for applying and willing to serve as a, as a part-time police officer. We are struggling to, to make sure that you know we have part-time police officers after the law changed. And it's great to have somebody so well qualified being able to serve. So, very grateful. Thank you. Um, and the, the appointments list was really just to kind of give us a first read and look so at what's coming up. So it's a first up. read, but yep. do keep in mind you've got two meetings in June, one yep. on the 12th and one on the 26th. Okay. Right. And you'll need to start making some decisions. We don't have appointment requests from SCEMS or from police, but I, we okay. can expect them in the yeah. next week or so, I would say. Okay. At the, I don't know that John will wait until the end of the... The yeah, he's usually, June. Pretty he's, quick. usually yep. he's usually starts asking for appointments in May and June. So. Right. I would figure it'd come but we quick. figured we wanted you to take a look at the list. So what you in terms of dealing with the request from Anna Lee, yep. um, you want me to have that incorporated into the annual appointments list? Yeah. Well, see, that's what I was wondering, you know, whether we wanted yeah. Um, we wanted to take action on this. This is a, related to the thing we passed at the annual town meeting so, about reorganizing the CPC. So, do you want me to explain? Yes, please. So, there's a couple of details here. Um, this, the community preservation committee change, was approved by the AG's office. However, there's notification requirements to let town to let the town residents know that this change happened. Mm -hmm. It has to be published twice in the newspaper. The last publication is the 10th of June. Okay. So even if you did do an appointment, it would have to be after that date. Right. Um, the second piece is I went back and I reviewed the rest of the bylaw, and these appointments are annual. So mm -hmm. it makes more sense to wait and do it with the annual appointments because then the term would be July 1st to June 30th. Right. Um, otherwise, you'd be looking at a staggered term, which yep. you know you can see if you look at some of the information I gave you in terms of motions, it does indicate a staggered term issue. So mm -hmm. I would say if you put it off, it might make it cleaner. Yeah, good. That makes sense. I don't have any problem with that. Yep. All right. So I will ask Pat to add that to. I did briefly talk to her about it, but I'll ask her to put it in the annual appointments. Great. Okay. Any permits for, for review and approval? No, um, I did want to alert everyone. Oh. So you'll yes. so we'll see annual appointments back on the agenda for next time. But I did want to alert. This is the other thing I talked to the personnel board about last Thursday was changes to the personnel board appointments. Um, you ha currently have three three active members, two members that are select board appointments, and that's Eric Farrell and Raloon Bialik. Yeah. And then one member who is the finance committee appointee. Um, the change to the bylaw indicates that there would be the, the two select board appointees remain. Um, I did ask the two members that are select board appointees if they're willing to serve. Mm -hmm. And they are. Um, they certainly, if people are interested in serving, they would be happy to um, step aside. Step aside. <laughs> but course. if no one uh, indicates that they're interested, yeah. um, they would will be willing to continue to serve. Okay. I did remind them that the moderator has an appointment. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have to develop an election process for the employee yeah. designee. Right. So I asked Chris Nolan to investigate that. Right. Um, because I don't know, I we we have to look sort of look for a process, but uh, I also when I reviewed the certified vote from town meeting, I sent that along to Dan Graves and advised him he might be uh, someone might reach out to be a moderator appointment to personnel board just to remind him he knows about it because he and I discussed it um, prior to the town meeting, but I figured just. 
to be safe, I sent him the attested copy of that article certification so he has it for his own records. So you can expect to hear something if someone else is interested. If okay. not, then Raloon and Eric would be interested in continuing to work. Great. And they've I appreciate been, it. Great. Everybody should understand they put a lot of hard they work do. into this. Yeah, very and grateful. it's not easy for them to do. Um, like everybody else, they're volunteering just like you guys are. So, you yep. know, they're, they're taking it very seriously, and I appreciate that. I think the board does as well. So. Yep, for sure. Okay. All right. So, no permits were approved. No letters of support. Um, you have any for reporting? So I've got a couple of things. Um, the contract for the trust repairs is substantially complete. There's a couple of documents I'm waiting for from the contractor. They were planning to try to come out and look at the space. I warned Kevin they were coming. I don't know. They didn't give me an exact time. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do my best to make sure that I'm there, but if I can't be there, um, I wanted Kevin and John to know about it. Yeah. So they're aware of it. Um, the We're working on, I've, I've had a request from the director at the South County Senior Center to look at rental agreements for programming space um, at the South at the Sunderland Congregational Church. So I'm looking into that document. We've got to have some advice from council. Okay. That's one of those tasks that fall within the retainer work. So yeah. um, okay. just know that that's out, that's out there. We've also got other legal questions in front of council. We've got some, we've got a question about the Primo's decision. We're asking for information. That's what I was going to yep. ask. Okay. So yeah. what we what, did. Where, they, where they were at, did they decide to want to do a they didn't reach out to us. But okay. What I did do is I had a, so we reviewed the email we received from the ABCC. Um, and then I reached out to council because I'd never seen one of these things. What, it's, what was the email? The email, we actually reached out to the ABCC yeah, about having same. two permits at the same time. Right. Um, and so I found Walsh, it, Sean Walsh was the person from the ABCC that reached back out to us. I, his email was kind of hard for me to understand, so I tried to get some clarification from council. Mm -hmm. um, there is a path we could take, and I was going to see if council would just give us some suggested language for it. Um, we don't know what's going on with the first permit. They don't really communicate right. to us no, once it goes to the right. ABCC. But the, we can call it. But the all liquor, is it a lot more money to do an all liquor? It versus? is. It's a different price. So it's more costly for, for the, business. the applicant. Oh, you have I to see. do a completely new process. You can't just modify the application. No, understood that. Yeah, they'd have to do that. Um, which, you know, I think we have no idea what's going to happen with the first application on right. the ABCC side. Right. They tend to be fairly quick about this stuff. Yeah. So we were just, I was trying to get a little bit of clarification. Yep. So That's I have some curious. irons. I, I kind of want to get another answer to another question, but then we can bring it back. Okay. Know that this is going to be on your agenda as a continuation at 645 on the 12th of June, okay. which is your next meeting. Oh. Um, we have I two have hearing continuances. Just so you know. Okay, so you're not going to be here? These two will have to run the show. Okay. Yep. Um, so we have two, Indeed. just so you know, we have two continuances for the 12th of June. One is the dog hearing, the noise, the... You're always avoiding the dogs, Trevor. I know. And Steve then we the also have Steve primos. Oh, good. So uh, some of that work. I did want to know, does the board want an update directly from council? This is, and the reason I'm asking is because it's a planning question, but we have a new member of the select board. Do we want an up? Do we want me? Do you want me to schedule a meeting with town council to go over some of the litigation that's ongoing? That probably makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, you'd probably appreciate that, right? Yes. Just to see where we are with yes. all the things that we're. In so the yeah. question would be: If you're not going to be here on the 12th, yeah, I don't even I don't know if to, I can get. I don't need to be there. I can tell you what I know is going on, yeah, but I, I, it's I'm background really. Bringing, so. Bringing. I could see if we could schedule for the 12th. If not, I would see if we could schedule for the 26th. To do an executive session. To do executive yeah. session so that, Perfect. Blake, you can meet our, count, our litigative council for a couple of these issues, and then yep. we can see if we can coordinate that. It is still great. town meeting season, so yeah. again, I can't guarantee when we can right. get them. Okay. But I was thinking that would this is a good opportunity, just getting an update on one litigation we're involved in. We it's a good opportunity. We have not seen another 
complaint um, on the dog issue, and I I haven't see seen any more communication. The, but Chris was communicating between the okay. owner and the and I know I know I saw the letter that they had um, put up, and I've seen the yes the thing, and I'm hoping that's working. Um, they put up I that barrier, and follow. I haven't heard any other follow up either. So um, we'll know a little bit more next week yeah. because Chris and I did discuss that okay. before he went on vacation. It's so Blake, typically what we do when we have executive session, we start at five instead of six. So, okay. Um, just if that's if that's what council can yeah, do, they, they and it's, uh, it's usually yeah. Zoom, so we don't have we any usually travel it. time. Because it's got to be executive session. They put it on their calendars. They usually attend remotely, um, and then we go over the background. And they, in this case, we would need to because you're new to it. But also, you know, updates on where certain litigations are. Um, the other thing I've been working on is so everybody's working on grants. I don't know. If we we heard. We heard uh, Christopher Dunn say that. I know Chris Nolan identifies it in his report. Yep. Um, I had some HR grants I was working on. One was the Community Compact Best Practices for Personnel Policy. So I sent the information off to the Collins Center. They're going to help write the report so that we can clear that up. Okay, um, and then we received an extension to finalize the employment assessment, which was really the DEI and succession planning elements. We weren't able to start that. And some of it was Collins Center being overbooked and some of it was, you know, dealing, it, a lot of it had to do with budget season. So we received an extension. I'm going to work with them to develop a project plan so we can get that off our plates. Um, we also, there's some other I wouldn't call them minor, but signatory responsibilities that the town administrator has for other grant projects that other departments have. Um, one thing that Trevor had reached out to me about, thank you, was the state revolving fund solicitation. Um, and I know this has come up at several meetings, is really whether the sewer commissioner's select board want to pursue an SRF loan. Mm -hmm. And so, Trevor, did you want to speak well, to that? I, I'd like to talk a little bit about it. So we're trying to get the surveys I know are done. I talked to Eric Meals. They were out there last week uh, surveying. The, this is for the effluent pipe that is, um, that is broken leading out to the river from the plant at, at the South Deerfield plant on the Connecticut River. Um, we had tried to get some help from um, NRCS, and it's just outside their scope. We're, we're going to need, um, you know, Army Corps of Engineer. We're going to need some help to kind of, like, we need to dam up the river area, build the head wall, put a new pipe into the manhole that we have, um, and, and do all that. But we need to kind of an estimate first. So I, I know we need to be moving along quick. I wanted to get the survey done, try to get some sort of estimate put together so that we could then decide, I, I assume we're gonna have to borrow for it. And the only place I know to get affordable rate is the SRF. Um, opportunity which is a state revolving fund which usually funds wastewater projects it's right. a it's a two percent note but it needs to be paid off in 20 years so unlike usda which is 40 years but i don't believe usda would be would be an avenue for this fund it's not like we couldn't reach out and find out but um they've been a great partner on that whole project but I was thinking, I know that the applications are, they're, they're taking letters of interest on projects and I thought it might make sense to at least put our name in the bucket to see if they would loan us the money to do the job. I don't even know how much at this point, but I know, I know that's starting soon. So that we don't process. even have an approximate cost. We have no we have idea. No yet. idea. It was yeah. discovered the beginning of May and yeah. you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of moving parts trying to narrow down what the costs are going to be, but it's really guesstimates. Yeah. And when you go out there and look, it doesn't look like it should be a lot. But as right. Trevor points out, you're working in a resource area that's heavily regulated by the federal and state government. Um, you know, you might have to dam up a place to build a head wall. Then, you know, so you've got all this infrastructure that supports the pipe that just drains the, the water. Right. And the it, clean water. It's going to be a lot more expensive than it probably should be. Should be. Yeah. Um, you wish you but could just the first step, as he says, was just to get um, survey. Yeah, DPC to, to try and give us an estimate of what it would cost to design this thing, and then maybe an estimate of, of what it would cost to build whatever's designed. Is that what you said? Yes, yep, yeah. yep. 
So and we can, need DPC to give us an estimate on what the repairs would be, right? right? But we didn't have enough information to really get that information, the way I understood it when we talked about it before. Correct, yeah, it's, it's, it was still too fresh to do that. But I'll, I'll try to reach out to Dave this week again and say where you at in the process. Because I, I, when I talked to Eric Meals this week, he did say that the, the survey guys were out there, so that should be done. And he's hopping to find out, whoa, what are we doing? So. Yeah, did we find out who's responsible for that part of the river in other words that if whose jurisdiction does it right I, is it the corps of engineers the yeah, army corps of engineers army corps yeah. yep they actually do anything up here got any, got any well i don't know i haven't had to deal with my note carolyn has back in the day but um this will be new to me yeah all right so. i think having some more information from dpc will inform pursuing yeah. a letter of interest for srf as yep. well as figuring out um how we approach Army Corps because this right. is that's what DPC said that that generally you know you know, you'd need to go through Army Corps of Engineers right and, they, they, and uh, so we'd have to get some some estimate from DPC what their engineering and estimate would be to do this work prove that and then and we do have some leftover money from the grant um, that we got through Eversource for the project um so i, I got to talk with brenda and see how much is there but i think we have some initial seed money to at least do the um the engineering part of it or, or the estimate part of it um because we we do have some money when we did the project we also got a, a D, um, department of energy um grant for some upgrades when we were doing the aeration stuff to save energy so we have that extra we have some money coming back to us from that part of the project uh -huh. so we were just going to pay off the loan with it, but it might be helpful to use some of that funding for that. Yeah, so I, I didn't know if you had talked to her. Um, Memorial yeah. Day week, sort of, a lot of people yeah, go I away. A, so I had a lot going on. There, it, right. Sh last week, everybody had a lot going yeah. on, and a lot of people took time off. So yep. some of these moving parts, we haven't all come connected all the dots yet, but it, it starts up now. Yep. Um, so that's sort of the bulk of what's been going on on my end of the office. Um, I know I didn't reach out to DPC directly. I knew you were talking to them, so I'm happy to reach out to Dave and sure. just say, hey, yeah, can you great. get us an estimate? Yeah. Because we need it. We need it because there's other things we have right. to do. Right. Yeah, and he recommended the, the SRF. He okay. Thought he, that was the yeah, only I pot him. of money he thought we could go after that would be a cheap note. I mean, not okay. that it's cheap, but. All right. Um, and nice we also have your enclosure coming mm -hmm. It's this, almost June. Your yeah, enclosures, any transfers. Yes. Brenda and I usually talk about that this time of year, so yep. we'll start talking about that. Right. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's definitely this SRF loan would be handled through the sewer enterprise. Yes. Right. So, Correct. Um, right. You know, I'm not, it, it doesn't fall under. Um, the old regulations about uh, you know no because it's a new project it's a new project so there's no 25 percent match unless unless we decide that we enough. are going to ask the, the real estate taxpayers and the septic yep. owners to contribute to fixing the plant so yep um just so that's everyone on the table that. and yep. out there and knowledgeable yep okay anything else um Anything that's all else? I have. That's all right. Um, well, if there's nothing else, then I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchie, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. All right.